sure you are praying in the spirit. Shabagada balakata, mente pratos kende balash. Shkane balakata pratos kabranda gada balakatos. Shkete rias kada balanta kamene hashada balada bos. Embrekete begede gada kata pratos kada balakatos shabrende gede balatos. Sene mene kata pratos kada balanta pratos rinesh ebrando zegede begede ash. Harabados sana malakata prandas kede balato zebesh. Shagede brede gede 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 balada bos ke prando goto pranda sele kedi ash. Shile balandas kada prada sibadish. Pray in the spirit. Shana makata barato sadi balako siata. Skinny bala hasada barandos kaprendi gidi bala rabu. Hallelujah. Father, give me an encounter tonight by your spirit and even by your word. Please lift your voice and passionately cry. Passionately cry for an encounter by your spirit, even by your word. He sent forth his word, it healed them, it delivered them from all their oppression. My eyes are open tonight. My ears are open tonight to hear the words of the Spirit. Lord, I came here with a hunger. I came here with a desperation. I came here with an intention tonight to receive, to be transformed, to be lifted, to be blessed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'd like you to pray. It is not the word that is available that will change you. It is the word that is accurately taught, understood, received by faith, and applied diligently. That is the word that produces. Proximity to the word does not bring transformation. It doesn't bring result. I'd like you to pray. Father, every familiarity that my mind and the devil will want to bring to your word to your atmosphere i curse it in the name of jesus my heart ever panting for you ever hungry for you lift your voice and pray approaching you with the spirit of reverence Approaching you with hunger and fire. in the name of Jesus father it remains an honor it remains a privilege we will never take your presence for granted we will never take the privilege of the gathering of the Saints for granted we worship you 
like you so deserve we adore you we honor you we decree and declare that you remain lord over our lives lord over this house and i pray in the name of jesus that you will bless us tonight we have come as a confession of our limitation in wisdom we have come as proof that we remain students in the school of the spirit we have come as a communication of our desperation for more for more for more more of your wisdom more of your power more of your grace more of knowledge more of your transforming grace help us tonight spirit of the living god we yield ourselves to your influence and we pray that you walk wonders in our midst tonight in the name of jesus amen and amen god bless you please be seated it's good to see everyone again hallelujah praise the lord tonight is one of those teachings that will leave you thinking about your destiny passionately tonight is one of those teachings that the lord will breathe upon that will give us a cause to think there are not many teachings like this but every once in a while god brings truths that help our growth that help us to relate with the times and give us wisdom hallelujah it was a revelation that god gave me and i looked forward to having the release i didn't even know that this will be the first platform i'll be sharing it and i'm very happy about it and i know that the lord is going to bless us in the name of jesus hallelujah i am a student of the school of the spirit and i'm a student of scripture and scattered across scripture are mysteries and principles that not only help our revealing jesus but it also helps in the glorification of the saints jesus himself said herein is my father glorified john 15 and verse 8 he says when ye bear much fruit so the father is glorified to the degree to which the saints excel it's not enough that jesus be glorified alone he also wants the saints to excel are we together and so i want you to truly pay attention i'm teaching tonight on a very deep mystery this mystery will help you to remain relevant is a mystery in the spirit that helps people to remain relevant regardless seasons regardless times are we together yes there is no guarantee that because you started well you will finish well there is no guarantee that that is why god calls himself alpha and then omega he does not only start he remains and the bible says better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof hallelujah so i'm teaching tonight on times and seasons it's a very deep revelation that will impart wisdom upon our lives You may argue with opinions, but you cannot argue with results. Results are powerful. There are people today who do not believe in the Lordship of Jesus. Someday, the result that will stand before them, the reality of heaven and hell, will compel them. I'm convinced that everybody in hell today intends to believe. But the time allotted for them to believe and accept the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus they exhausted that time and even though now they still have the faith to believe the timing does not allow it again every time is not convenient for every result realities in this kingdom are time dependent and they are also dependent on seasons in agriculture we learn that at least for nigeria other parts of africa and the west 
they have at least four seasons but it's not the case for us we just have two seasons the rainy season and the dry season are we together you can plant every time but there are seasons when even the environment supports you for instance if you plant during the dry season you will have to take responsibility for providing water you will have to outsource an intelligence and laboriously do what the rain would have done for you free of charge are we together but when you sow during the rainy season you have an advantage of the environmental conditioning favoring that agricultural pursuit and so every time is not convenient for everything and if we do not understand the mystery behind times and seasons you will find out that at the end of your life you did not do much both for the kingdom for yourself for family and so on and so forth the school of ministry has been running now for i think this this should be the eighth session and almost all the students unanimously agree that one of their best in terms of the courses that we teach is called personal transformation and not because of all of it but there are a few topics there that just challenge you to think about your life and i believe that value every information that gives you a reason to understand life not just god alone there is jesus the way the methodologies of the kingdom you have to understand this hallelujah genesis chapter 41 contains a very very interesting story and in that story is a mystery the mystery holds the key to transgenerational relevance stories in scripture were not just written for nothing it's a long reading be patient stories in scripture were not just for the information regardless the actors there was there was something that was hidden in those stories and the assignment of the spirit of revelation is to open your eyes so that you will see beyond the stories beyond the parables you understand the mysteries are we together now if you read a bible story and you do not get the mystery behind it you have not benefited from that story if the only thing you know is there was a man called abraham for instance a woman called sarah did they were childless for a long time then isaac came etc that has not blessed you that is just a historic information but when the spirit of revelation comes it takes you beyond history it takes you beyond archaeology it opens up to you something in that story that is consistent with the character of god and it reveals it hands over to you a key that helps your excelling in life until you find a kingdom key in a story you have not benefited from it as far as the study of scripture is concerned So Genesis chapter 41, the Bible talks about, apologies for the, the, um, the way the projection is looking, but the Bible talks about a young man who for various reasons found himself in the prison and then he was now about to be lifted. And then the Bible says in 41, please give it to us a long reading. The Bible says, and it came to pass at the end of two full years that pharaoh dreamed so it starts with a dream the pharaoh was the king he was the supreme ruler over egypt egypt was a very strange place it was a place of abundance it was a place of plenty it was the dense superpower of the whole world egyptians were vicious people they were intelligent in terms of science and scientology they were agriculturists they were they were warriors you you didn't stand close to a, an egyptian those days they had all kinds of mysteries they had god who would reveal secrets to them they were fierce people hallelujah so the Bible says one night the king goes to bed and he had a dream. Please follow me carefully. And behold, in that dream, he stood by a river. Next verse. Verse 2 now. And behold, there came out of the river 
seven world favored can you give us any version just for explanation this were cattle calf any version at all that gives us a clearer explanation and then the bible says that okay i hope amplified will not waste our time okay well favored cows sleek and handsome see what amplified does and fat just give us niv or something i mean amplified now is calling a cow handsome all right so when we are done then we go back to kjv and that it went out of the river seven cows watch this now the king is dreaming isn't it amazing how the holy spirit is so intentional about the church understanding this it goes into a king's dream to tell us what is happening so the king is having a dream seven cows sleek fat and the bible says they grazed among the reeds the grass now after them seven other cows ugly and gaunt came out of the nile and stood beside those on the river bank and then this is the first mystery and the cows that were ugly and gaunt ate up the seven sleek fat cows then pharaoh woke up so that's dream number one he goes to bed and he's standing by the nile and he sees seven fat cows then after that he sees seven lean cows are we together and according to his dream the seven lean cows ate the fat ones and kjv tells you they didn't increase in size they remained like that are we together verse five he fell asleep again and had a second dream seven heads of grain healthy and good were growing on a single stalk verse six after them seven other heads of grain sprouted thin and scorched by the east wind then another mystery the thin heads of grain swallowed up the seven healthy full heads then pharaoh woke up and it had been a dream verse 8 help us please verse 8 the bible says that pharaoh was troubled when you read kjv in the morning his mind was troubled so he sent for all the magicians and the wise men of egypt pharaoh told them his dreams but no man could interpret them for him you see pharaoh was a very intelligent man he really deserved to be king other people will wake up and say what a wonderful dream foolish cows thin ones are eating you and you are just keeping quiet instead of you to use the advantage of size and fight back but pharaoh said no kings don't dream for nothing there is something in this dream even though i do not understand it holds the key perhaps to the salvation of my kingdom and he began to probe he called the wise men and then the chief cupbearer said to pharaoh today i'm reminded of my shortcomings 10 pharaoh was once angry with his servants and he imprisoned me and the chief baker in the house of the captain of the guard each of us had a dream the same night and each dream had a meaning of its own the bible says now a young hebrew was there with us a servant of the captain of the guard we told him our dreams and he interpreted them for us giving each man the interpretation of his dream be patient please and things turned out exactly as he interpreted them to us he was restored i was restored to my position and the other man was hanged 14 so pharaoh sent for joseph and he was quickly brought from his dungeon when he had shaved and changed his clothes he came before pharaoh pharaoh said to joseph i had a dream and no man can interpret it but i have heard it is said of you that when you hear a dream you can interpret it i cannot do it joseph replied to pharaoh but god will give pharaoh the answer he desires here goes the dream again in case you didn't read the first one in my dream i was standing on the bank of the nile went out of the river there came up seven cows fat and sleek grazing in among the reeds uh-huh and after them seven other lean cows you know they came he says i had never seen such ugly cows in the land of egypt now the dreamer is saying his own thing the first one it was the spirit of revelation speaking now the dreamer is giving us the full weight of what he saw that he did not see cows that lean that ugly and vicious the lean ugly cows ate up the seven fat cows that came up first 
but even after they ate them look up no one could tell that they had done so that means we must examine those cows a cow that does not eat just grass eats another cow and does not increase in size is that an ordinary cow are we together no one could tell they had done so they looked just as ugly as before then i woke up 22 in my dream i also saw seven heads of grain full and good growing on a single stalk after them seven other heads sprouted withered and thin and scorched by the east wind the thin heads of grain swallowed up the seven good heads i told this to the magicians but none could explain it to me wow then joseph said to pharaoh listen carefully now the dreams of pharaoh are one and the same pharaoh you won't, you saw the same thing the realm of the spirit was repeating a mystery for you to get that it used different actors and scenarios but the dream is the same it says god has revealed to pharaoh what he is about to do next verse then pharaoh said joseph said to pharaoh the dreams of pharaoh okay 26 now let's go to 26 please the seven good cows have nothing to do with animals they are talking of seasons that's the first revelation don't let the cows confuse you he said uh -uh. it's not about animals it's about seasons are we together the seven good cows are seven years and the seven good heads of grain are also seven years so the spirit of revelation was coming to pharaoh to teach him something about seasons that this is not about animals immediately some of you know that your interpretation of many dreams have been wrong just from this accurate revelation you can see that this is a deliverance for you because usually if you get up your meaning will be around the objects of the dream but sometimes the meaning has nothing to do with the objects of the dream in this case that both the cows and the grain are the same thing time it is once please go back to verse 26 it says it is one and the same dream 27 the seven lean ugly cows that came up afterwards are seven seasons so are the worthless heads of grains caught by the east wind they are seven years of famine it is just as i said to pharaoh god has shown pharaoh what he's about to do 29 seven years of great abundance take note are coming throughout the land of egypt but seven years of famine will follow them then all the abundance in egypt will be forgotten and the famine will ravage the land the abundance in the land will not be remembered because the famine that follows it will be so severe the reason the dream was given to pharaoh in two forms is that the matter has been firmly decided it's an ordinance and god will do it soon keep that scripture there look up please this is a king who goes to bed and comes up with a dream then a young hebrew boy is invited to his palace and he says oh king this dream has nothing to do with cows nothing to do with plants this is a mystery in the kingdom that it talks about years that the way the earth works please look up the way god designed this system to work is that there will always always be night after day then there will be day after night hmm. then there will be night again after day are we together as far as we know in the last six thousand years plus no activity on earth has sustained the power to break that law indefinitely a few times it was manipulated but that law was still in place 
and he says oh king even though you are a king of a great country understand this mystery so that your relevance will remain if you do not understand it a day will come nobody will remember that there was once pharaoh seated on the throne look up please i want to share with you a very deep mystery if you do not understand this no matter what your achievements are today no matter what height you rise to in life if you cannot decipher the dream of pharaoh you will not last in this kingdom the bible tells us that the memory of the just is blessed it's not just the mind the thinking the memory that there is something about the just and god's ability to preserve his good hand and his workings upon their lives our life and history is full of people who did not pay attention to this dream and whether or not you understand the dream it does not stop what will happen from happening listen to me there will always be seven years of plenty and that after seven years of plenty what followed was seven years of famine and that the years of famine does not leave the years of plenty alone that something in your future can pursue something in your yesterday and eat it up goodness why will my future not face his front and turn to the past and want to eat up your achievements want to eat up your the mighty things that you have done businessmen have broken this law and so after building empires for years they do not know how to last and at the end of their life you see them victims of the seven years of famine it swallows up everything some of them are our parents you open their CVs and you are surprised you once went abroad yes sir you once shook hand with the then military head of state yes sir you once studied in harvard yes where are those achievements the seven years of famine please hear what i teach you tonight let me give you the wisdom that will cause you to last there are sportsmen in this country who are still alive there were there was a time their name was synonymous to honor and breakthrough but they did not discern the mystery in pharaoh's dream and it is painful in your lifetime to watch the years of famine come and eat up the years of your abundance the bible says pharaoh said no i won't keep quiet there is something about this dream that if i don't pay attention to understand the end of my life may become a memorial that will not be desired notice what the bible says that the seven years of famine are so vicious no matter the size of the cow they can eat it up my god so when i look at your life all i see is seven lean cows left where are the fat ones where are the achievements where are the mighty things you did in ministry where are the exploits in business what suddenly happened africa did not know this so when we were celebrating gold and jewelries and running around we did not know the dream of pharaoh was knocking that if you do not know this today you look at africa and you will almost not remember that gold was taken out of here that all kinds of things were taken out of here there are musicians that did not know what to do with their seven years of plenty if you mention that name there were names in ministry in music i'm not trying to be sarcastic if you mention them they were synonymous to honor but they did not know what to do with seven years of plenty and right now those vicious cows he said pharaoh what you have seen will surely happen this is why god showed you hmm. are we together historically in this nation growing up we were told that there were several platforms and denominations that did great things for god sometimes before we were born and maybe at infancy but the same dream came listen this dream will look for every church this dream will look for every celebrity this dream will look for every human being you don't have to pray you don't have to be righteous you don't have to be a sinner you just have to be on earth once you are on earth i guarantee you the dream of pharaoh is coming 
what is it about a dream that God will have to repeat it twice Pharaoh wake up he goes back to bed he has the same dream again Joseph said what you have seen will surely come to pass that the cows talk of times and seasons Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1 Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till your work on earth is done. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your spirit till your work on earth is done to everything is that in your bible to how many things <laughs> to everything to your desire to your relevance to your name to your impact to everything there is a season now when you read the bible don't read just to look for a message to preach to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven above heaven we don't know what happens there but under heaven to everything that means if you do not understand times and seasons look up please ladies and gentlemen you may be well meaning you may be well intentioned but you will live the rest of your life in pain and regret there are so many people moving around life and saying life is not fair this is not fair i used to be a sincere man of god i served god with all my life now look at is this the lot of a christian they say there are many people who say i i did everything i knew why should life treat me this way my brother my sister it is not unique to you it is a mystery that you have not been taught and tonight god is opening you that it is not something unique that just looks for you it's looking for every man hmm. thank you oh my father for giving us your son and leaving your spirit till your work so seven years seven does not always mean seven seven just is just a prophetic representation the lesson is that there is a law that works upon this earth that there will always be an interplay in every man's life of seven years of abundance and seven years of famine in ministry it will happen in business it will happen in marriage in your family it will happen no matter how godly or how ungodly you are there is no amount of prayer and fasting that will stop these seasons from happening these are laws right now is dark it's a stupid thing to stand and be praying against darkness for no cause rather you look for torchlight and you don't buy that torchlight necessarily in the night you buy it during the day it was the mistake of the five virgins they were all virgins but the foolishness or wisdom was the issue and the bible says some carried extra oil why extra because they knew that there's something about seasons and the bible says when the bridegroom delayed those who were innocent all of them started sincerely it was time that revealed who was wise time is a revealer it may not create changes but time reveals time reveals wisdom and time reveals foolishness 
are we are we blessed in the parable of the virgins it was never lack of money because the foolish ones still had money to buy more it was pure carelessness they didn't think the bridegroom would delay that long because he said go to them that sell and the bible says they went and they bought when they returned the door was closed when you read about noah there was a time noah said rain is coming is it in your bible i'm showing you this laws working noah for 120 years he kept shouting with his wife his sons and their wives yes rain is coming i have built an ark that is big enough made of gopher wood three stories come rain will come when that rain come it will not look like there was anything on earth it will not look like any plant any shrub was ever planted on earth and yet the people said don't worry noah you are a noisemaker you are a stupid noisemaker when the time came and seasons were about to change who closed the door read your bible it was not a demon god himself closed the door and when the rain started the bible says the heavens gave its own rain and the earth gave its own rain if you were in the middle of two of them you will be in trouble and it crushed those people the whole earth was swept in rain there was no single green leaf that survived it took a dove to keep checking checking whether there was a place of refuge it kept returning until finally it found a place of refuge noah was warning and saying it will not always be like this dear people on earth now you have the chance the sun is still shining no matter how slow you are isn't it amazing that provided the animals were moving god was patient the snail would not run as fast as the cheetah but at least they were moving and god respected their honor to those seasons and waited till they entered the ark are we together when that door closed it closed sincerely once upon a time lazarus and the rich man the rich man had an opportunity to do certain things he misused his opportunity and he found himself in a place where he said please lazarus can you dip from father abraham's bosom a dip of water and let me quench my thirst and he said no seasons seasons listen to what i'm telling you every time is not convenient for everything if you do not discern seasons there are times you will have every opportunity but that door may never be there again now listen carefully in every man's life these two seasons will continue to alternate themselves for as long as you live on earth you may not be able to stop the seasons but we'll be going there shortly the mystery to handle those seasons and reign through them was the interpretation of joseph's dream joseph's dream was not a solution to pharaoh alone joseph's dream was the spirit of revelation speaking through a young hebrew boy to the inhabitants of the earth that regardless seasons you are going to be able to stand i will be still and know you are god i will be still and know you i wish you can sing for me when the oceans roar when the oceans and thunders roar I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the storms. So I will be still and know you are God. I will be still and know many couples do not know that these seasons come in marriage too and so they are happy enjoying themselves husband is happy with wife 
this gentleman this my dear people who came and testified you saw how he didn't want his wife to fall down passion hmm. except this, this is not bad news don't be scared ladies and gentlemen but that there are seasons every time you see a fat cow let it remind you that there is a lean one also the gentleman said he got an alert that's a fat cow the footballer was signed to a club side that was paying him millions he forgot his age was growing growing into the season of lean cows he forgot oh esther do not forget that vashti gave way for you to be there if you do what vashti did you will shift too but if you do what esther did he will still remain I am amazed at people's lack of discernment during the first part of Pharaoh's dream. Let me tell you, the season of abundance, write this down. The seven years of plenty, write it please. The seven years of plenty represents seasons of ease, seasons of opportunity. seasons of access opportunity the key word is opportunity seven years of abundance represent seasons of opportunity that according to the law of time and chance everybody on the face of the earth According to the goodness of God must encounter seasons in your life where things will work well listen to me carefully it is more than praying for things to work well the character of God necessitates that sometime in your life there will be a manifestation of his benevolence his good hand seven years of plenty represent seasons and moments of ease represent moments of opportunity what opportunity an opportunity to know god an opportunity to build relationships an opportunity to understand your assignment an opportunity to be helped those are seasons of plenty some of you god saved at a platter of gold someone went out of the way paid your transport fare dragged you to church ensured that you had the message followed up on you those are seasons of plenty i assure you to not always be like that there are some of you whether you give or not there is a harvest coming from the sacrifice of your parents yes listen to me the deception of many young people so when we are teaching on the principles that bring these things you say nonsense I just got an alert before service. 100,000 as a student. What is this guy talking about? You've forgotten that for every fat cow, there is a lean one coming. All of a sudden at 26 years, you got a job with CBN. You got a job as a diplomatic person receiving 300,000. Let me tell you this the seasons of abundance have a side effect they can give you a short-term memory it, it 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 erodes your ability to think far you see when you are in the season of plenty you can never imagine scarcity i'm not talking of finances who would have imagined that a day will come where the gathering of the saints will have to be suspended for a while you could drop on a bike and say i don't like i thought they'll pray for the sick bros see you later and the spirit of god is saying use this time now now that you have brethren to pray to pray with you if you pray and you are lazy you see someone's zeal that zeal will cast out that spirit of laziness you get back to prayer while god was saying pray that prayer now please don't feel bad you didn't know that your father was on his way transiting 
the breadwinner of your family when the holy ghost was telling you now that you have the opportunity there is a prayer department there is koinonia build capacity you didn't know that you were just two years left to be the breadwinner of your family whether prematurely others will be sleeping and the holy ghost will say wake up it will not always be like this the seasons of opportunity Everybody is inviting you, placing a demand on your grace. You are a music artist. There are all kinds of invitations. You are a man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. There are all kinds of invitations. And you are carried away by the deception and the fame that it will always be like that. Remember Pharaoh's dream. Hmm. Business is happening. Everyone who would have known that one day bill gates will no longer be the wealthiest person did you know how much he was worth that time did you know how much jeff bezos was worth that time whenever you see the cows i assure you who would have known that one day the name archbishop benson idahosa would be of blessed memory if you were alive during his time and saw a man who went round the earth 53 times a man who would keep governments down would you ever imagine that one day somebody will stand up to threaten the gospel so when that opportunity was happening the church would have established themselves many of our parents there were times where land was 500 naira is that true they would even allow you to start building I said, no, 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 the earth, there's a scholarship that would used to come. And the, the dream of Joseph kept coming, kept coming. I said, be careful. A time will come, this 500 naira land will be 50 million. And many made that mistake. There are denominations that made that mistake. There are families that made that mistake. There were times when the missionaries were allowing people to go to school free. They came to some of our loved ones. And said even if you don't go send some of your children say no 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 don't worry I'm not sure school will be so expensive like this times and seasons can I tell you this the pain of many people at the latter point in their life is because they are met with a vicious circle of change in their lives they don't know what to do with some say it's an attack some say this is unfair but it is the reality of the dream of Joseph. So God is telling you, my dear, build capacity in prayer right now. Oh God, just send the man first and God said, forget about the man, pray. I'm not a prophet of doom, but you didn't know it would take you five years before your first child will come. And after year one, year two, said, Lord, where are you? And he says, you just pray. And you found out that your prayer bank was empty because you replace prayer with cosmetics now i'm not I don't feel bad use your cosmetic provided it doesn't interrupt your prayer life you are not building capacity you are praying and fasting into realms of the anointing and god is saying understand warfare he said no 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 what I need is just grace. I know that with power will come wealth. He said, be careful. Demons are real. They are not looking for everybody. Build capacity. God may recommend the message of a man of all these things. I'm not interested. Suddenly you step into an anointing that you will not last 90 days. You get that anointing, you wake up with vicious marks on your body for starters. You preach in a program, you are happy delivering everybody. And then your bike doesn't take you home. And then things start happening in your life and say, Lord, am I not serving you? Listen to me. It will not equally be easy all the time. The deception that comes with the years of plenty is complacency the deception that comes with seasons of plenty is complacency living for the now living for the now there are many people who never believed they knew they would retire but they just felt one day one day and before you know it retirement came no house no savings 
know nothing some of you now remember when you were in secondary school this is you today looking for a job when you saw those many years ago 10 years five years you were just saying no 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 i'm just in demonstration i'm just in a, a model learning or one of these schools pray you say no i'm still a child my uncle is praying and the holy ghost is saying build capacity and now you are in a position where you will have to trust god seven years of plenty will always be followed by seven years of scarcity it is a law it has nothing to do with being good or bad complacency is the mistake that people make during seven years of plenty some of you had people in your life years ago there was no request that you would open your mouth and say and they will not grant is that true some were uncles some were people who just loved you like the gentleman or the, was it the lady who was sharing here anything he says someone just sent him an alert and most people do not know what to do with those seasons you had an uncle who was working say for instance in nmpc and god made that man to love you what do i do for you and say uncle honestly there's one style now that is in town i don't know if you can just give me any grants it to you so what else do i do for you and the holy spirit is saying look don't keep quiet your family does not have a land they can drive them out of the house why don't you tell him and say uncle i don't want clothes i i can even work for you i don't want my father to be old without a land and the holy ghost shows you in a dream you stand up and cast it away seven years of plenty then all of a sudden you will find out god forbid but tragedy strikes and everybody who is a support system for you is gone and then you begin to complain and say god is not fair remember pharaoh's dream there are men and women of god all around the world today once upon a time their names were household names you you couldn't have a convention without those people that convention is not there but today you barely can even know they were alive i went to preach somewhere and i saw someone i used to know that person or know about that person and i was shocked and surprised when i saw that person in the congregation it made me to think about my own life it was a shadow i've had the privilege to travel and to meet a few people who were household names in different areas and sometimes you look at them and you cannot imagine have you seen politicians like that when they won election they didn't know what to do with the seven years of plenty they were just sitting and elder statesmen said we want you to become counselor we want you to be they don't even know how much the form costs they just said feel it they became counselors and they enjoyed themselves until they lost the next election and they reduced back to nothing my brothers and my sisters lay hands on your head in one minute and i like you to pray and say lord open my eyes for the sake of my children for the sake of my family don't let the devil lie to you that this message is not for you i assure you for as long as you are alive on this earth one day you will need this message please pray those following online i like you to pray lord give me wisdom hallelujah in the name of jesus write this down seven years of famine represent seasons of constraint seasons of inconvenience seasons of scarcity seven years of famine represent seasons or moments of constraint moments of inconvenience moments of scarcity for various reasons it can be because of age age no matter how anointed you are 
no matter what revelation you catch about long life the reality is for as long as you are carrying this mortal body until immortality swallows up this mortality you will not always have that energy no you can reduce your age reduce it times keep slashing it into two for as long as you're on earth a day will come you will come to that reality you want to jump the stairs like before with energy and find out that wow what is this strange breath that i'm taking i used to run marathon when when so people like pele and people like all these athletes will sit in the stadium and watch their former self and and remember that free kick and remember what they did unfortunately seasons are gone sports stars would be invited with prestige to the same stadium that they once went with honor and now they would sit down what of former presidents once upon a time they were the voice of their territories everything they said became law and now you see them moving some sick some not totally whole and they sit down and watch oh there is a lesson for us to learn today young beautiful lady look at the person who gave birth to you and learn wisdom once upon a time mama was fine like you too are we together now listen carefully young men that jump around and will not sit down in one place and deal with their destiny look at the man that gave birth to you he was more agile than you he became serious at age 20 yet he's still trying to catch up till today and you you got born again at age 30. that means you need grace mercy speed restoration all these forces of of the spirit to back you up once upon a time our parents used to tell us that you could go to buy something outside if the owner were not there you can pick the thing and drop the money there and they'll come and find it there it was bishop fred ado that sang a song he said things are not the way they used to be the reality of time now you leave your khaki outside and go to ease yourself quickly and come up <laughs> years ago one time i think they 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 parked my car somewhere it was called um panteka in kaduna do you know that place i was shocked that we came out and this thing you used to tie you know to 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 yes the tire i and i was in that car how they removed them this is the world we live in now someone can say god bless you and your wallet is missing your money is missing your atm is missing You had a chance where everybody around your life then was a trusted person you didn't utilize that time everybody who was your roommate was a prayer warrior you didn't utilize that chance now everybody in your office hates you and you have to live there for a very long time seven years of plenty will always follow seven years of famine due to age due to increase increase responsibilities look up please there are times that god will tell you as a man build capacity and pray uh -uh. how many children do you want to have five children god says i know what five children look like i'm the creator of the ends of the earth dig deep now you refuse and right now you just want to pray and say in jesus name here comes your child it's like a dream you almost want to deny the child and yet he looks like you the child wants to play with his father but you you want to play with your maker and god will say it's not an excuse face that child you had a time when there was no child to distract you you could pray for eight hours you had no job you had no house you had no reputation you could go and buy corn nobody would know but now that you have become a big man whatever you couldn't do yesterday will not be easy now again Our society is full of regrets of all kinds 
Many elderly people go to their graves in pain. There are many books written as a warning to generations coming to say, don't make the mistake I made. I had opportunities. Some people, some of our loved ones were raised by missionaries. They were the only ones who were born again at their time. And yet they still failed. How many people traveled abroad? When Nigeria passport was, was really something to talk about. They went abroad and returned like criminals after 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. You still see some of them in the village and they will show you pictures. And you are like, what happened? You shook hands with this person. Is that not Dangote? Say yes now, then it was nothing. Where were you? What happened? How many people are angry today watching people on TV? I used to know him. We were classmates. Huh? We wrote, uh, uh, what they call it now, jam together. We wrote this. And they ask questions they cannot answer because seasons came and they didn't know what to do with seasons. We're establishing Pharaoh's dream. Now, the key to sustained impact and relevance, write it down. The key to sustained impact and relevance. Since it is true that seasons change and that things by themselves will never be the way they always are we must know what to do there is a key and that key is in the advice of joseph let's continue from where we left up genesis 41 please hurry up we still have a lot to do show us the ancient paths will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest show us the ancient paths will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to enter your end. And now, now listen carefully. We've analyzed the problem. The Spirit speaketh expressly to the church. Now through a young Hebrew boy, Joseph. He's showing us what to do. Let Pharaoh look for a discerning and a wise man and put him in charge of the land of egypt what for let pharaoh appoint commissioners over the land and pharaoh take a fifth of the harvest 20 percent a fifth part of the harvest during the seven years of abundance uh-huh they should collect all the food of these good years that are coming and store up the grain under the authority of pharaoh to be kept in the cities for food 36 this food should be held in reserve for the country to be used to be used you will eat the food but not now keep it a day will come that food will be relevant he says to be used during the seven years of famine that will come upon egypt so that the country may not be ruined i can't stop the famine but there is a technology to make sure that even in famine i can still eat as though there were no famine is that good news for someone that there is still a way you can manipulate your way through seasons and you will remain transgenerationally relevant kings will come and go events will come and go but at the end of it you are still standing the mystery is joseph's advice 37 the plan seemed good to pharaoh and to all his officials uh-huh so pharaoh asked them can we find anyone like this man that means the men who walk this path are scarce it's a question can we find these people in koinonia who can manage the seasons of plenty 
can God find this kind of man in you? In whom there is the spirit of God. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since God has made this known to you, there is no one so discerning and wise as you. Now, the Bible tells us that he became, you know, he became in charge of all of those things. He now married, you know, Potiphar and so on and so forth. But here's the point. We're going back there later on. The point is this. Joseph gave an advice. Look up, please. He said, every time you have that harvest, there is a part of that harvest that has an ability to still be alive in the moments of famine. Take part of your fame. Take part of your energy. Take part of your access. Take part of your honor. The days when the honor is there, he says, save and invest. It's a business language, but tonight it has nothing to do with business. That you can save part of every good thing God gives you. And there is a way you can invest it. That it will go to your days of plenty and stand there at the days of famine. That when famine comes, you will now eat out of that time. Let's go to verse 40. Let's go to 47. 41 verse 47 now watch this it says during the seven years of abundance the land produced plentifully uh-huh joseph collected the food produced in those seven years of abundance in egypt and stored it in the cities watch this in each city he put the food grown in the fields surrounding it 49 joseph stored up huge quantities of grain like the sand of the sea a wise man it was so much that he stopped keeping records because it was beyond measure he didn't focus on calculating all the fame and the accolades how many people fell under the anointing how many honorarium did i get at a point he said look some of these records can be dangerous let me focus on storing so much because days are coming records are good but they can destroy you who am i better than who did i preach more than last week there were five preachers but who are people saying was better those are records that somehow uh, it, it, there is a healthy part of it to help you but there is a part of it that maybe it may be destroying you give us that scripture again it says before the years of famine came oh no uh if you know if and all of that okay joseph stored up huge quantities of grain like the sand of the sea it was so much that he stopped keeping records of it because it was beyond measure keep this scripture let me advise you be careful make sure you do not part yourself too much and too long after the giant strides it is good to encourage yourself it is good to encourage those you lead it is good to encourage those you mentor but beware of prolonged celebration of success it can be dangerous it can switch you to the other side of the pendulum and become the reason for failure when jesus rose up from the dead you will imagine that you would go to potiphar's i mean to uh, uh um uh, what's his name now herod and all those people and say where are those stupid people that thought i won't come back to life no when he came back to life straight after doing a few things he went straight to the disciples who were hiding in the upper room and began to teach them for the next 40 days he didn't have time to waste no 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 no. i've been enthroned no problem the creation will celebrate me later is this not how champions live as soon as they win one olympic while the whole world is using their face to market products and make money they rest a bit and their coach is a stand up stand up say ah coach i just won he said, uh -uh. let's begin to prepare for the years that will come because there is a new there is a new competitor that was now born until then you are you are getting old but there is a young boy isn't it amazing have you seen just from the field of sport notice all those who defeat champions they are ordinary people who come with zeal and while they are praying their champions stand and say no there can't be anybody more than me and suddenly you will see a teenager just arise and do something that will surprise them please give us that scripture 
We are walking scripture now. 50. Okay, well, um, 51, 52. This is about the, the sons of Joseph. Let's go to 53. We are reading to verse 57. It says, The seven years of abundance in Egypt came to an end. Leave that scripture there. Everybody look at it. There's something about your life that is written there. Come to an end does not mean your relevance has come to an end. There are seasons. Jesus said, I must walk the works of him who sent me. Even Jesus, when he walked upon the earth, he added timing and urgency to his life. While it is day, for the night coming when no man can walk again. The seven years of abundance. Look at me. Dear preacher, it will not always be like that, that the whole world will keep giving you invitations every day. Keep coming. It's not because you are backsliding. Is because there will always be another generation you are not the only one God anointed there are people who are rising too oh Elijah do not forget that there are other prophets under Obadiah's custody they will also arise oh businessman you may be great but one time uh, there is a Zuckerberg on his way coming there is a Google on his way coming whoever knew that you have billionaires under 30 today it was something not to even think about whoever knew that technology would take young people to that point where young boys today media is almost the new government they can shut a president did you ever think like that that a, a, a the owner of a media house can have the power to say i use my influence and my platform and i shut your voice The seven years of influence, the seven years of relevance came to an end. Next verse, 54. Let's walk fast, please. Media, help us. And the seven years of famine began. Just as Joseph had said, there was famine in all the other lands, hallelujah, but in Joshua Selman's life but in koinonia there was food so the presence of food does not mean famine is not still on it's just that something was done mm. so i can do something about these seasons the seven years of famine began then the lockdown began and there was no church for five months then the lockdown began and your business did not have patronage the lockdown was not your fault but it still happened I told you it's a law then all of a sudden your husband began to have pressure from his place of work because the promotion that was due him would not be given and in reaction to that he started bringing that attitude back home woman of God what did you store for the days of famine suddenly on account of your integrity they relieved you from the job just when your last twins were born now you are watching two children plus two others that you have and you are wondering what do I do I don't have money was money the only thing you saved why didn't you save relationships? Why didn't you store connections? Why didn't you store prayer? Why didn't you store the deposit of favor? What happened to these qualities? Whoever told you grains are the only things that can be invested? Are we together? It says there was famine in the land, but in Egypt there was food. When all Egypt, go back to 55, let's go there. When all Egypt began to feel the famine, the people cried unto pharaoh for food then pharaoh told all the egyptians go and meet the man that knows what to do meet the man that took advantage of my dream so when there is famine there are people they look for and if you are one of those people it is your key to remaining relevant not every when there is rain they will always look for noah when there is hunger they will always look for elijah 
when there is famine they will always look for joseph you remain relevant by becoming that man that people can come to when there is famine he says go and meet them that sell there are people who have it they cried unto pharaoh and pharaoh said go and meet joseph and do what he tells you to do two more verses when the famine had spread over all the country joseph opened the storehouses notice he never gave them free i like him because in terms of famine you don't give free there is a price for those who did not obey pharaoh's dream hey look up you can be listening to free message now you didn't pay for anything yours is just to come and sit down or just clean the chair worship team sings for you you cough and someone is there to say sorry don't worry it will not always be like that dear ones receive it and consume it with all your heart because when that time comes when the storehouse is open i promise you it will not be free again a day will come you will listen to the same message you ignored while there is a fight going on somewhere a day will come you will listen to that message but it will not be under this kind of convenience again once upon a time areas of palestine and the rest these were places where mighty things happen but today you want to call upon the name of jesus on those soils it may be at the expense of your life a day will come you will have to pay for the food that is now free you will pay with your time you will pay with your energy listen to me when god is telling you understand the dynamics of healing and health you may say what for pay attention to it so that if the devil tries to bring any evil report when you are 40 when you are 50 suddenly you begin to feel one kind of pain and like the gentleman they come and tell you you have one year to leave did you save anything for those days you can draw from the archives of your spiritual investment and with confidence you can say i i have no business with the grave the fullness of my days i will fulfill look at it it says joseph opened the storehouses and sold grain to the egyptians i thought they saved it for them there is no record in the bible that pharaoh stopped them from saving their own and there is no record that they saved their own they sat down and crossed their legs and said don't worry joseph is saving it for us prayer department is praying for me don't worry i know apostle he doesn't sleep in the night he's interceding for me but i assure you the day those grains will be opened the warehouse there will be a cost it will no longer be free are we together did you know once upon a time i had so much access i mean people could just come any day any time you could meet me on the road and today you can imagine sometimes i get to pray for people and i see my own people and i'm touched i'm looking at you you are looking at me but we can't touch ourselves again there are people who god sent they got 180 something in jam god still gave them admission for five years they were roaming around abu loitering around until their final year when they finally said let me just come for this miracle service and they graduated in tears and some of them right now they are where they are and every friday they must buy data and listen to something they would have listened free their roommates today are already in ministry some of them already have churches and it's now they are answering the call it's not too late but it will not be as easy as it was it's like going to secondary school at age 45 no knowledge is a waste but chances are you'll be sleeping because at that level both your life and your mind there are responsibilities there is nobody in that class that should be a father but now you are no knowledge is a waste but it will not come at that platter of gold are we together for the famine was so severe throughout egypt the last verse and let me build on some things and we pray read it please together one to read and all the countries came to egypt to buy grain from who 
because the famine was severe i thought it was just egypt from joseph's dream did he say the interpretation did he mention world there yeah? i thought it was just egypt so it's a law that happens to all men other countries who didn't have the dream still suffered it so others were just eating they didn't know that it was one year left for famine to start and famine came and all of a sudden the kings who called themselves and said we are dying buy us money has failed all of a sudden news started going and said there is a young hebrew boy in egypt there is so much abundance in egypt and they started running the bible says gentiles will come to your light are you seeing now and they are kings because of the extent of the famine they will discern that it is true men are saying there is a casting down but i don't know what is happening to this group of people for them it looks like there is a lifting up that when people are saying god what shall become the lot of our lives you are giving and you are blessing when you are 50 years you will say i know god more now than i did even in my youth i have more time for him now and they say why is your life like this you say because i was taught the mystery of pharaoh's dream when the lord taught me this mystery i got down my knees and i cried before him and i said thank you lord for your love for me i have found the key i have found the key our fathers turned their back and allowed us to see their scars and now that we have been privileged to see it we can know that by the grace of god we will rise we will remain and at the end of time even with honor it will be that the name of the lord continues to be lifted in and through our lives whether we are here or not transgenerational relevance there was something jesus did that even though it's been ages the name of jesus still continues to be lifted you will go to countries and even at the edge of a sword there are people who would stand and pledge for him what happened that the name cannot go down what what did jesus do I, yeah i want to show you something now what happened because if you do that same thing for some of you the name of your family will remain forever do you know there are families that the moment maybe the children get married the name the honor name there does not just mean the the title there was an honor that was upon the families but they did not know what to do and right now it is shame it is reproach i rebuke that over your life Amen. in the name of jesus christ what do you do during seasons of opportunity let me give you four keys how to maximize your seven years of abundance number one what do you do during seasons of abundance build capacity number one build capacity spiritual capacity intellectual capacity build capacity the days of abundance are not days of over celebration the days of abundance are not the days to be carried away by the flatteries of men i've told you there is a weakness in men there is something that honor does to us there is something that celebration does to us when you become a superstar or you aspire to become a superstar i am telling you there is a side effect the side effect is that it makes us short term in our memory we we fail to think show us the ancient paths will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to build capacity now that you have time now that you have someone giving you pocket money now that you are still employable you have not retired yet it looks like you have 25 years left it looks like you have 20 years you have 15 years you have 10 years 10 years looks like a lot of time 
until you see what comes with it that's the time to build spiritual capacity you are praying you are a student for instance you still have time there's no reason to go and be celebrating nonsense and be wasting your time no the little time you have you are studying open my eyes that i may behold wondrous things you are listening to teachings you are spiritualizing your mind you are getting materials buying books not shoes not clothes leave those things they will follow you when you are transformed focus on your transformation the money that young people waste on useless things things that have no profit as far as the future is concerned if you can be patient that money multiples of it will look for you a thousand times the days of abundance are not the days to look for invitation i am a music minister please invite me i am a man of god god called me to be an apostle and a prophet be patient there are so many sermons you are going to preach in your life you will need grace go right now and be obtaining the grace don't be running around looking for the invitation build capacity build capacity that's what you do during times of abundance build capacity capacity to last capacity to defend the grace that is now given to you get knowledge get knowledge don't be a local champion get knowledge number two what do we do with our seasons of opportunity number two build relationships oh write that in capital letter write that in capital letter build relationships productivity and fruitfulness are relational what betides you if you do not have anybody to help you during your season of famine there are families today everything they eat is what they worked for everything they wear is what they bought everywhere they go they go is where they took themselves to no 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 it should not be like that relationships are powerful they are advantageous connection they are systems of leverage there has to be somebody in your life who likes you enough to be able to invest their time their reputation their credibility on your destiny are we blessed yes sir I don't have capital capital is not the only thing relationships can pay I met a gentleman one time and he told me something he said I don't know what one of these schools in Africa and he said that he had been looking for school fees to, to collect his certificate accumulated I think their school they allow them to pay to steal school like student loans and he needed a total of let's say three to five hundred thousand to go and collect his certificate since 2016 and while he was telling me he sounded sympathetic and i told him from 2016 till today didn't you have classmates didn't you go to church did everybody fail who you used to know you mean nobody out of the hundreds of people that god gave you the privilege of relationship with you did not bless anybody enough to remember you there are people what is three hundred thousand what is four hundred thousand for someone it is painful to know someone who is not willing to help you because you trivialize relationships hear me dear ones some of you will be in departments some of you will be in your faculty you will see people whose shoes are not are not something to write home about and you ignore them you are looking for only your tribesmen you are looking for only those you used to know and yet your heart is not open to discern what god is doing a few years down the line those people will be ceos and multi-millionaires you will not evolve out of somewhere and come and say bless me based on what there are so many people today claiming portions of people's successes based on my father used to know you no 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 it doesn't work like that build relationships relationships are costly investments it will cost you your ego it will cost you your time it will cost you your sacrifice
Can I tell you this? There are people who will never suffer in this life. As far as this life is concerned. If they don't give their life to Christ, for instance, except they go to hell. But as far as this life is concerned, they, they have connected themselves to too many people who will never forget them. Oh, 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 I was so happy to see him. How are you? Greeted me. We exchanged pleasantries. What are you doing now? So this and that. I said, really? And then I remember. I said, no, 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 no. You shouldn't be in this position. Cut the long story short. God lifted that person and exalted that person overnight. There are some prayers you will not need to pray if you understand relationships. Did you hear what I said? Believe me. Believe me. I know what I'm telling you. Is a covenant is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake there are some of us the way you are going with your life now the truth is that you have already secured the destiny of your children people will love you too much every time they see you they remember the quality of your relationship and they will say over my dead body there are people today who will never be stranded of house rent there are people today even if you decide to be lazy your relationship has placed you on honor and salary forever may you be like that this night listen to me I'm speaking to you because some of you are in your seasons of abundance now everybody likes me think well now in light of what I'm teaching it's a window that will not always be open you invest in relationships the person will remember the day that he came late and you got up and said please sit down ah no 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 I came late for Koinonia no sit down I can stand you will think he has forgotten you you will just carry 20% of your time and invested it are you seeing now yes sir after koinonia someone is going home broke and the holy ghost tells you it's just 70 naira please pay for bike for this man sir can i pay for bike for you i don't know you who are you No, koinonia here just to bless you and you pay that seventy thousand, and uh, that 70 naira and you don't know that that 70 naira is an estate you just paid after 10 years he will see you and your wife and your children listen to me and he will say i remember you Sheung, are you not the one in you say zari i say what are you doing now I say well god is faithful he say come god has helped me today please come let me give you one place i'm giving you listen this this wisdom key will bless you for the rest of your life there are some of you you are not represented in anybody's story anybody's story nobody can make reference to you to say you prayed for me while i was looking for someone to pray for you were there you were not there while my child was crying 10 naira uh, what, what they, this thing they give children um bobo you did it you just watch the child how why do children cry like this you are subtracting let me tell you what you are doing listen 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 take me very serious you are subtracting from the years of abundance you hear someone is getting married god gives you one hundred thousand. you can't take ten thousand and say look just to bless you can i tell you when you make efforts to sincerely be friendly from a pure heart you are making investments for your tomorrow there is something that being blessed does it gives you the ease to be a blessing and not everybody will struggle forever the person you are seeing who cannot eat today tomorrow you will get to a point where well to become like like the sands of the seashore and at that point all that will be left is who do i need to bless not will i bless there are people today every day they are giving houses in this country there are people giving jobs in this country no interview there are some of us the names of our parents are keys it can open any door there are some of us the names of our parents are padlocks they look at your name 
and say which one it's all right uh, you go you hear from us and yet you're a first class student you must make up your mind that your name will become a key to your child there are children today who are head boy head girl regard even if they are not taking first position because something about the relationship of their father and the principal is his school he can do whatever he wants to do with his school look at me who is in your life now sincerely helping you why do you have to call people before they help you calculate your age sees you as what he's he's helping today there are many preachers they love god they are born again they focus on god but they ignore men you pay for the speaker yourself you pay for the keyboard yourself you are getting married even the committee of friends they come together and you have to pay them again what sort of a a, a human being are you now make up your mind from tonight that you are going to invest in relationships you don't need many but the few that you have your roommates may be there you are the only person who is privileged among them keep hiding your food you don't know what you are doing to yourself are we together keep washing your plates alone you don't know what you are doing don't, don't follow all this nonsense that people do in films and movies it would destroy you those people are acting go through the sacrifice now look like a fool now there is a kind of business where you don't sell anything you give like a mad person but the returns are guaranteed is the business of men Your roommate comes back with five carryovers as if he returned from a funeral. You are the first to say you are an embarrassment to redemption. You continue. He will remember you in the future. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. One day you will be a doctor. It's all right. Things happen in life. And regardless what it is, don't worry. Where will I get the last school fees now? I'm in final year. I'm having to spill over. My father will kill me. Look, there's a little scholarship I used to collect. It's not much, it's 100,000. I can spare 20,000 from it. It may not do you much, but let it encourage you. You did this for me from a sincere heart. After 10 years, your 20,000 has grown into honor. As that man rises, your 20,000 makes you rise too. You never knew your 20,000 was a living thing. I show you why many people never rise look at great men for some of you who have had the privilege to work with great men their lives are purely based on history and based on relationship look at politicians there are sons and daughters today who become governors who become senators not because of any capacity i remember you they were about to shoot me in 1981 i remember and they laugh retired generals and they're all laughing so what are you doing now my son wants to get this oh don't worry hello sir we found the person please give this person and you are there praying and your prayer request right on earth right in your presence was given to someone may god deliver us from ignorance <laughs> see as i'm talking to you now there are some of you you are seeing why you hate your family don't hate your family but learn from the mistakes they had opportunities and yet they wasted it they insulted everybody around them you had a house help the house help wake up by five you had names that you would give her stupid girl where are you ma she will come whereas that's the person who would deliver you in old age and the holy spirit is saying don't do this she will come madam i had a dream in that dream i saw you crying in the future is you are the witch that this thing mm -mm. You beat the girl and is is remnants of food you give her. There's a special plate, plates that they gave her souvenir for wedding. Where are you? Yeah, come and take your own. And the girl is eating with gratitude. And you do not know that time and chance happens to them all. One day, one correct born again man who fears God with fire and wealth will now come and not even see your children. Will now see that one and say, I like this one. Say sorry. Um i'm not sure you know what you are saying there are others say no I, my heart has seen what i like we die here who we'll carry listen 
I spoke about relationship and you are now excited for nothing. Sit down. <laughs> are we together? God will use that man to carry that young girl and wipe the tears of her generation, not just her family. Whereas someone likes you and says, tell me about your mother. I've had that story before. So she's the one. I will never marry you till Jesus comes. Why must we do this kind of thing for ourselves? There are some of our loved ones who had the opportunity to give jobs to people. Did they give them jobs? No. They were in positions where they would have the names of 100 people. They didn't help anybody until one day stroke hit them. And now the company had to retire them. Why do you want people to bless you when you didn't raise anybody? Don't you know when you raise people, it's a cushion for your own self. There are music artists today who did not raise anybody. They ate alone. As God was lifting them, other younger ones were coming and said, listen to my song. You say, what is this? I received it by the Spirit. He said, no, it's not the Holy Ghost that gave these kind of songs. Instead of you to encourage the person, don't worry, you can rise. Listen to me. I want to open your eyes tonight to see that some of you, what you are doing is that you are not investing your 20% for the years that are coming. There is nobody in your life who you bless intentionally. You are just expecting people to bless you. No. We have many children in Koinonia here. Which one have you ever bought something and told the mother, be blessed? We have many people in school here, young people. Some of them, their school fees is 1,000, 2,000. You see the, the foolishness we do? Valentine comes, you see people acting like fools. They do all kinds of things waste money that even the girl's parents have never given her and yet there are people here i'm not being sarcastic i'm waking you up there has to be someone who will tell you this thing fake lives for nothing you are a student you are dressing like a ceo you are not there buying expensive things whereas you would have used that money buy five books on prayer find people that you see god already lifting them sir this is i thought this would bless your life one day you are in a restaurant and you see someone arguing almost getting embarrassed because of 10 naira show up quickly that's an opportunity for an investment in the future and say sir don't worry i don't know you but i've seen your face going on oh really please let me have the honor to bless you you sit down in the car you just get an alert of 10,000 and the transport fare is just 200 naira. An opportunity to sow into your life. By the grace of God, this is one thing I did with my life. And I thank God for it today. Because the person who may not be able to help you yesterday, certainly will be able to help you tomorrow. Is God blessing us? Let's hurry up. What do you do with your seasons of opportunity? Number one is build capacity. Number two is build relationships. Number three, selflessly invest in blessing and transforming lives. I think I already stated that. Acts chapter 9, please, quickly, just to add scriptures to it. Selflessly invest in blessing and transforming lives. This is what you should do with your seasons of abundance. Selflessly, the word, the key word is selfless. Selflessly invest. Let me tell you this. During your seasons of plenty, forget about yourself. Be of less, important, less importance. Pour your heart into people not because you are expecting something in return sincerely pay the price to build people pay the price to be part of the stories of people to him who sits on the throne acts chapter 9 from verse 36 help us media we're reading to 42 now watch this Peter came to a place in Joppa. The Bible says in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. Look up, please. Which when translated is Dorcas. The Bible says who was always doing what? Talk to me, please. She was always doing good and helping the poor. She had an opportunity. She never allowed the poor like that. 
she did good and she helped the poor 37 about that time aha uh -huh, here you have come again time she became sick and died and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room 38 leader was near Joppa so when the disciples heard that Peter was in leader they sent two men to him and urged him come please at once Peter went with them and when he arrived look at this look at this look at this when he arrived he was taken upstairs to the room hallelujah look at those who gathered all the people she invested in all the widows stood around him doing what crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made for them while she was still with them while that woman was alive she would not see poor people go like that I may not have much but let me add a smile to you when she died the widow said no way no way they stood and said peter do something the widows provoked his anointing and they said this woman who will now do it for us this was the woman who was there for us may you have someone who speaks for you oh may you have someone who speaks for you in the name of jesus may you have someone who can speak for you and bring to remembrance what you have done for the kingdom peter provoked by their tears he sent them all out of the room and he got down on his knees he didn't stand to pray this kind of prayer he knelt down and turning towards the dead woman he said tabita get up and she opened her eyes Kebala subranda kaskubiata she would have died like that and he would have finished but something about her investing in lives he said i shall not die but live and declare there is a way you are so useful to kingdom come that is not only god that will pray for your longevity men too will say may god leave you for us can i tell you this help them please listen there are people today look at me there are people today the goodwill of men is almost like prophecy on their lives do you know that goodwill carries power whether born again or not the woman that fries akara her blessing is on you the one who sells bread his blessing is on you my mother you do not know her blessing is on you then there is the prophetic blessing on you then there is one who you visited during your birthday this this myriads of blessings you think they don't matter one boss man somewhere may not be born again but he told you let it be well with you i tell you heaven honors it there are people who when you see them rise it's not just a product of their personal work with god alone they are surrounded by the goodwill of people learn this lesson tapita no you can't go like that who then will feed the widows my life today by the grace of god is surrounded by intercessors all over the world some who have been called by god and others who are benefactors of things by his grace that i have done for them who have vowed in life let me tell you this there are people today if you carry a gun to kill me not everybody but there are people who will stand and receive it and die first it is over their dead body may you have such people in your life it does not happen by being a man of god it happens through the sacrifice of investment if baba deboye today lifts his hand and say people my car just spoiled what do you think is going to happen <laughs> many car stands will be emptied because one man who grew with a generation passionately pouring his heart to them a life of selfishness let them do it for me is a recipe for pain in the days that are coming I remember many years ago I went to preach somewhere and I saw that the ministry was struggling really struggling and they put together a little honorarium and I knew that these people don't have this capacity probably they borrowed money just to show honor I called the pastor and his wife I told him I said look I thank you they were crying I said I love you people I just came to bless you I didn't come to receive money I know that you people are working and the Lord gave me an instruction I sowed a dangerous seed for them prayed for them and told them may God bless you T 
till tomorrow those people my my song is on their lips sometimes they send me text message and they identify themselves as people who are blessed this is more than maybe 10 or 11 or 12 years ago who remembers you for what you have done in their lives where are the widows that remember what you are doing for them some of you even your family members can't, re can't remember you because you've not done anything for anybody it is time for change are we together number four what do you do during your seasons of abundance listen the fourth thing you do is study those who have maintained relevance through seasons that's the fourth thing you do study study those who have maintained relevance while you have the time while the dark days have not come pay the price study those who have gone ahead of you who have survived seasons hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12 the bible says to follow them who through faith and patience follow them hebrews 6 12 it says to follow them who through faith and patience go back to kjv have obtained the promise a man who is celebrating 40 years in ministry celebrating 35 years in ministry 45 years in ministry even if that person was playing i think you can't play for 35 years you can't play for 45 years herein lies the arrogance of our generation we insult people who have gone ahead of us we downplay the sacrifices of successful people Archbishop Benson Idahosa said do not talk about anybody's results until you have twice that result there are people who have not built anything they have not raised anybody in their lives but there is no man of God they will not talk about all across the globe no it ought not to be so years ago when i used to counsel when i used to do counseling i remember a man who came and uh, a, he was talking and they brought one young boy and the boy was just lambasting his father in my presence like trying to be bold to say the father has been irresponsible and the father just kept quiet to respect me as though look the boy is telling the truth it's not my fault and i was just watching the young boy just shouting and talking the rubbish and i asked him a question i said young man have you ever saved any amount for your school fees and he kept quiet at his age there are many people in the world who are changing nations and changing their cities and he's there he's never raised even one percent of the school fees and yet he cannot honor the man who at least is trying hallelujah I remember one time I was counseling someone years ago very funny funny incident and um, I think the person had two children or so and then at the point he said do you know what it means to raise two children do you know the financial implication and I looked at the person with compassion in my heart I said if I tell this man how many families not children by the grace of God and by the privilege of God's mercy probably in his entire lifetime in many lifetimes put together he may not come close to it and here is me giving him a kind advice with all due respect and he's almost dying because of two children and now i'm telling him there is a way to go about it and he's arguing how many poor people don't listen to people who god has helped they invent their formula and argue and tell you it's not the way and yet the person is, tr is struggling suffering giving excuses respect results and respect people who god has honored to get results the kingdom's way are we together study them study them One of the fathers of faith that I met recently we had a very long discussion with him and when we had a long discussion with him he finished talking to me advised me and 
you know how I felt? I felt like somebody who was moving from nursery school to primary school. I really felt, not false humility. I could see so many things I did not know. And yet I'm someone who is very passionate for knowledge. I was not afraid for myself again. I was afraid for many people who will not listen. I said, oh boy, these people have lost it until the God of heaven shows mercy. You know, in your world, you will always think you know until you see a horizon that is higher than that. I don't mean to brag, forgive me if I do, but I remember years ago when I used to teach people on the secret of church growth. A lot of people used to say so many things. People then said it's because he's leading students, it's because he's doing a lot of things. They are just young people who are sympathetic to him. I said, What are you saying? This is scripture. If you have it you have it if you don't have it you don't have it don't argue with results just hold that gently don't force out that little girl remember what i taught you you drag that lady carelessly tomorrow you have a lot to pay for <laughs> she'll remember you you think she'll forget you you are my hiding place you always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. I will trust. Let's wrap up. Luke chapter 16. Let me show you one person who utilized these seasons very well. Luke chapter 16. Very quickly, please, from verse 1. And the disciples, and he said unto his disciples, look up please. There was a certain rich man which had a steward. And the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. So the rich man was angry at his steward. <laughs> and he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship. For thou mayest no longer be steward. Verse 3. And then the steward said to himself, Jesus is teaching now. What shall I do? For my Lord take it away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig. And to beg I am ashamed. So what is his strategy? I am resolved what to do. That when I am put out of the stewardship. They may receive me into their houses. You hear the man thinking now. Jesus is teaching. Verse 5. What did he do? <laughs> he called every one of his Lord's debtors. And said unto the first, How much owest thou you, my Lord? Verse 6. And he said, A hundred measures of oil. And he said, Take the bill. Sit down quickly and write 50. Watch what this guy is doing now. The wisdom. This is somebody who is not born again. He has seen trouble come. And he knows that ah, if they drive me from this estate, I don't have anything. So let me quickly do something with these relationships. And he said to another, How much owest thou? And he said, A hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and write eighty. And the Lord commended the unjust steward. Now, God was not teaching to cheat. He was just saying the man had sense to know that he could lean on those relationships because seasons were about to change in his life. Are you getting the morale now? He commanded the he commanded the unjust steward because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Nine. And I say to you, make yourself friends of mammon of unrighteousness, that when ye fail, they shall receive you into everlasting habitations. What this means is not teaching you to go after money or go after all of these things. The idea is that use your seasons of plenty as a leverage. The moment you have fame, you have blessings, they pay you your salary, you get some arrears, don't eat everything alone. Remember to edge your impact in someone's life so that tomorrow you can have people who can stand by you stand with you support you support your family and help you 
if all you have in your life is your intellect if all you have in your life is your salary if all you have in your life is your business if all you have in your life is you and yourself you'll be in trouble in today's world hallelujah you now understand what god was doing when he told us that we will not sell our teachings now please you're a pastor here i'm not saying don't sell tapes that's not what i'm saying but this is a painful instruction at the time god gave this instruction the media ministry was the major one of the major income generating revenues for ministries at that time books and this aside from offerings and tithes so that was a suicidal project i know the quality of the things that i teach by the spirit why would we not sell them to at least generate some revenue for the ministry and god said no it shall not be that way put it online and let people have it free and i said so be it my god my god fast forward whatever god tells you bar he doesn't tell you for today he tells you for your 10 years for your 20 years that's why i call it an investment there are nations today there are people today who forever for the rest of my life the lifetime of this ministry and many who are connected to this grace there are certain levels you will not go lower than again you do not know the extent of the impact that these teachings have brought for people obedience selflessly giving yourself to the lord lamentations 3 27 as i conclude The Bible says, it is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. That means there is timing for everything. Bear your yoke now. Go through the sacrifice now. I love you. That's why I'm sharing with you this truth. Examine your life now. The idea of me, myself, it is only me and me and me alone is a recipe for disaster and destruction. And let me tell you this. If you go and start selecting people to bless because you want something in return, you will be surprised that that harvest will still not come. The harvest comes not just on the basis of giving, but the sincerity of your heart. If I give you something today because I'm expecting you to remember me tomorrow, it's a joke. That, that is business. That's not love. Hallelujah. There are all kinds of people who continue to bless my life, bless the ministry today. Apostle, thank you. You came to our campus when I was a student. I remember years ago, I went to pick my, my card from one of the embassies and um, i was just to sit down to do my biometrics and the gentleman who was sitting in front of me as soon as he saw me he was almost shaking he said good afternoon sir said, ah somebody knows me here again this is an embassy and he said sir i have something to tell you remember you came for a crusade in our campus so 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 yes that was where i got born again i got filled with the holy spirit i didn't even do anything again the gentleman ran around did everything and i said oh dear yet that is somebody's prayer request one day you will go somewhere and someone will establish his business and say you may not know me but you blessed me you preached i remember it was under your ministration that i got born again i covenant with god that 10 percent of all my profits will be for you and your children forever you will think that the 10 percent is ten thousand until you see what comes the first month and you say this is how it will be oh for the rest of your life jesus said in john 9 verse 4 i must walk the walks of him that sent me while it is day for the night cometh when no man will walk again some of these my dear people you see they make sacrifices every week i'm sure you see them they are here and then Sunday they are in Abuja again and then they return, they are coming, then they are rushing, then they are coming. It's a sacrifice. I have eight sessions of ministration from this night to Monday. Eight. I thought I'll be able to have some time with the school of ministry students at least just to say hello. 
but first thing in the morning i'm out of this place why am i doing these things number one love number two sacrifice make sure your life is counting for something beyond you listen to what i just said make sure your life is counting for something beyond you beyond you this gentleman is standing behind the camera it's a lot of sacrifice you see that and he was one time the best school of ministry student in one of the years and when he's done with all these things He's part of those who will be rushing down to Abuja to help the students with their registration process. These are sacrifices that people make all the time. What are you doing? Don't sit down and say, Apostle, pray for me. Let people be doing it for me. No. It is always my joy to see that my life becomes a blessing. And I told myself, it is not because I'm expecting anything from anyone. But it is with all my heart. Today I'm humbled and many times in the secret I just shed tears of joy. Seeing what God has used this life today to do to the nations. I, I completely forgot that yesterday was 11th. It was people that reminded me that you are aware that it's 11th March. I said, well, I just said, well, can you imagine? Because I was focused on impact, not records. Records. That you are so diligent you can almost forget your birthday is those you have impacted who will force you to remember there are people who who will ask god that one year to the time honor me no something is wrong remember my my i'm five years in the lord who have you blessed five years in the lord five years in the lord is that young with the influence of the holy ghost mentorship and the word five years if you were if you were diligent in five years you should have done much for the kingdom let me ask you a question who did you bring for koinonia now who will thank you after 10 years there are many of these are young people now who just got admission some of you just pass them you climb a bike i'm on my way to edify my spirit keep doing it you will in the years to come you will see that when these days those ugly cows come they will eat up everything you have done I will never waste an opportunity to build capacity. I will never waste an opportunity to build quality destiny relationships. I will never waste an opportunity to selflessly pour my life blessing people. Listen, this appetite for fame, this appetite for a name, kill it in the name of Jesus and focus on being a blessing. Focus on being a blessing rather than having your face behind those things god who sees what you are doing both in secret and open will reward you openly there are families today that lift up the name of the lord and call upon the names of some of us because of what we have done in their lives day and night can your parents call upon god for your sake every day to say lord remember this our daughter remember this our son there's an old hymn that says must i go an empty handed he says must i meet my savior so not one soul with which to greet him must i empty handed go are you living your life just for yourself where is my husband where is my job where is my money where is my destiny helper when will you be all that to other people some of us are so self-centered we are not even aware of the degree of self-centeredness money is useless until it lives for a cost bigger than you anointing is useless until it's dispensed for a cost bigger than you fame is useless until it's dispensed for a cost bigger than you listen to me influence is useless knowledge is useless until you can live for a cause that is bigger than you for some of you god is challenging you you are already a worker you're on salary one day you can look at a patient and it's just three thousand and the holy spirit can tell you pay that bill 
you don't have to know the person you reap what you sow not where you sow apostle i don't have much that's why you may never have much because it's not in your heart hallelujah it pays to serve jesus i speak from my heart you'll always be with us i can't even remember it there's peace and contentment in serving the lord i love you for better you've forgotten it i'll serve you more truly than ever before i'll do as it beats me whatever the cause i'll be a true soldier i'll die Mm. these were men who did not write these things for money they wrote it sincerely it was a contemplation of their hearts two prayer requests tonight one you'll be seated the other you'll stand up the first we, our time is gone it's going to be both a reflection and a prayer think about your life in one minute while you pray am i living my life maximally please think don't look around sincerely you are 25 now you are 30 now you are 40 now you are 45 in the next 10 years you'll be plus 10 of your current age in the next 20 years you'll be plus 20 of your current age apostle i'm only 15 years dear one in the next 15 years you will be 30. apostle i'm 40. In the next 20 years, you would have spent 60 years on earth. Please pray. Talk to the Lord. Talk to your maker. Lord, I am tired of living a visionless life, a profitless life. Things have to change. The dream of Joseph, again, and the dream of Pharaoh is sweeping across the earth. Asking people to remember that for every season of relevance every season of abundance every season of opportunity there will be seasons of constraint there will be seasons of lack it is what you do tonight you are hearing the voice of the spirit heed to the advice of joseph it was not an advice and a counsel for just egypt a day will come the person who supports you today may not be there a day will come the person who may be the breadwinner may not be there again a day will come your certificate will be limited i tell you a day will come your spirituality as powerful as it is you will need more to it It is what you do with the moments now. Those following from around the world and the many who will be hearing this no matter how long it takes. Be wise. Be wise. It says, so then teach us to number our days that we may spend and apply our hearts unto wisdom. Do not destroy your opportunities. Be wise. Do not destroy your moments. Hear me. There are moments that when they pass you by, they may never come back again. You have the opportunity to bless your parents now while they are alive. Don't trivialize their presence. A day may come, they may not be there again. You have the opportunity to have a spiritual family that so loves you. And will commit their hearts to your growth don't trivialize them days may come you may not find them again our time is gone but pray please pray hallelujah please rise up on your feet for the last prayer point 
I'll do as it please me, whatever the cost. I'll be a true soldier, I'll die at my post. One of the wisest decisions that I made in my life was to love God with all my heart and pursue Him passionately and sincerely. The next was to pursue knowledge, to pursue wisdom. The next was to understand men and to pay the price to be a sincere contributor to the growth the lifting the rising of many without expecting anything in return not for the purpose of making a name that's politics i made up my mind that even the course of serving his majesty i pass on to be with the lord so let it be at least let it be that i did my best we are not called to do everything, but we are called to do our best. I know our time is gone, but you are standing and looking at me. Forget about the face. Hear the voice of the Spirit. God is telling some of you, you are making the exact mistake that parents made, that uncles made. In your world, it is only you. In your world, it is only your comfort in your world it is only your pleasure provided it does not affect you to hell with anything that is going on in the world it is just me i'm the one who collects let the uploads be to me let the name calling uh, and the honor let it be to me no nobel prize is not given for those who take from the world it is for those who give are you ready to pray lord make my life count make my life relevant i heed to the dream of pharaoh someone pray let me not go through the pain of neglect as a man of god the spirit of god is speaking to you already as a businessman the spirit of god is speaking to you already pray please pray you're not wasting your time tonight for i spoke a word you were singing over me make sure you're praying you have been so so think of your children while you pray born on born my life will count I will live for a cause bigger than myself I will utilize my seven years of abundance my years of influence my times of opportunity I will not waste them in pride I will not waste them in self 
I will use those years to build capacity. I will use those years to build relationships. I will use those years to selflessly pour my heart for the lifting of others, for the rising of others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen to me. Please let me give you an assignment. Number one, make sure when this teaching is uploaded, please listen to it at least three times. Everybody, download it. Don't say I was here. Pay the price and download it. I promise you this will be one of those arsenals you will need in the days to come. Listen to it. Assignment number two, please give at least two people this teaching. I know you distribute the teachings, but I am pleading with you. If you love God and you honor me, I'm giving you an assignment. Look for two people and give them this teaching. Tell them, listen to it. They may insult you. Don't worry. It's the reproach of Christ. You give them and say, listen to this. It will save you years. It will save your children years. Let us not make the mistakes of those who have gone ahead of us. Remember Pharaoh's dream. The mystery of times and seasons. The mystery of transgenerational relevance. God has given us as a ministry. It is only koinonia that is 10 years. It's not the ministry. The ministry is far more than 10 years. But within 10 years through this platform god has blessed nations because we have selflessly poured our hearts on us our all there are times that i would finish counseling two or three and yet i have to wake up maybe by five or so to rush for the airport especially if it's the abuja airport the risk on the road as i was driving down coming i i fought tears many times i said my god I said I will do this again if I have to do it. Not for myself, not for a name. If I were doing ministry for a name, I would not be doing ministry again. There is nothing I'm looking for that His Majesty has not given me. I am, an, I am someone who has been privileged. Not many people have this privilege in a generation. It's an honor I will never take for granted. But my heart, I've not slept in days. I was battling sleep while I was coming. I said, should I rest a bit? I said, no, no. Impact. You don't live just for yourself. My money, my everything. No. As you listen to this message, listen to it with a notebook. Those following from around the world, download it. Give your people, give your churches and say, hey, here is a revelation from the throne. The dream of Pharaoh. The mystery of discerning times and seasons use your seasons of plenty and for those of you who are in seasons where the lean calves have eaten up those ones remember after every night day still comes but while you are in your night time do what jacob did while you are in your night time do what the shepherds that watch their flocks by night did so that when your day breaks it will no longer be jacob but it will be israel are we together let me tell you this i have a covenant with god my word from him does not fail believe me it's not pride you have to understand what listen you see this how well i pray that you will believe and i pray that as we progress you will see the authenticity of what the presence and the power of God can do. Hallelujah. And sir, I'm seeing you climb a ladder in the spirit. This is to Solomon Lange. And there are not many times God shows me that vision. But every time I see a man climbing a ladder in the spirit, it's a symbol of a new season being opened. And in this place, we stand and agree as the body of Christ, sir. 
you are a gift to the body of Christ and we declare I stand by the apostolic and the prophetic and I declare in the name of Jesus for you and your wife be shifted to a new season a new dimension of possibilities in the name of Jesus may nation and kings drink from your grace by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus please be seated let me just pray upon these four people father in the name of Jesus these ones who are stepping into this unique ministry the ministry of psalmistry you will start having songs even from your dreams you will wake up with very strange songs there are four of them I release this grace right now the power of God will come on them please bring them out very quickly Bazanji Kunyaba Please bring them Mete Makona Mete Makona Mete Makona Bazanji Soroba Bazanji Kunyaba Mete Makona Mete Makona Bazanji Soroba Mete Makona Bazanji Kunyaba Hallelujah There's someone you don't hear well with your right ear The power of God is touching you right now Right now as I'm speaking Right now as I'm speaking The power of God is touching you Your right ear I don't know if it's that you don't hear completely Or you hear partially But in the name of Jesus the Christ of God I decree and declare that ear opens now that ear opens now that ear opens now for all of you who are here by the Spirit I declare be released into that ministry be released into that dimension of grace let there be supply from heaven in the name of Jesus the Christ of God songs from the throne in the name of Jesus you will bet songs that nations will sing. Do not despise his ability at work in you. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God, I decree and declare new dimensions in the name of Jesus. And by extension, everyone here who is a worship minister, in the name of Jesus, I declare supernatural songs, songs with power, songs with fire, songs of the Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah the lord bless you the lord increase you in the name of jesus christ ah oh death where is your sting i'm seeing something in the realm of the spirit oh death where is your sting and no oh grave where is your victory in the name of jesus i'm seeing a family that this week if not for this prayer now i'm seeing that there is the spirit of death but in the name of jesus the anointing of the holy spirit is going to come on two of those people blotting out every handwriting my bible says and every ordinance that speaks against us i command the spirit of death in the name of jesus who is the christ of god be banished from the life of god's people be banished from every family in the name of jesus same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me Yeah, 
hear me any family represented here inside all the overflows outside and online every pattern of death that will not let you rest i come by the rod of a higher priesthood in the name of jesus the christ of the living god i declare that the plague of death comes to an end now the plague of death comes to an end now the plague of death comes to an end now you shall not die but live i prophesy life life to you life to your children in the name of jesus hallelujah please be seated god bless you you can take them back to their seats hallelujah whilst you're seated just begin to pray in the spirit this is what we do we are people of the spirit we are spiritual people please pray hallelujah hallelujah praise the name of the lord we're going to get to the word but there are people here you have gone through untold seasons of stagnation marking time sit down marking time in one place and it looks like the only thing moving is your age nothing else is moving in your life listen to me there is a grace for speed that the lord is saying i should release upon people hold on please hold on please as i pray this grace upon you we'll do this just in five minutes and i'll sit down Please, whether you are an usher or not, I want you to help them because of the way the Holy Spirit operates under this prophetic word. Because they will begin to run, literally. And I want you to help them so they don't injure themselves. In the name of Jesus the Christ of God, here at Koinonia, I declare upon everyone under the sound of my voice, by the Spirit of grace, let speed come upon your life. Take that grace now. Please bring them up. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that. Help them, please. Take that grace. Bring them up, please. Take that grace. In business, take that grace. Take that grace. In ministry, take that grace. Ten years in one, I prophesy to you by the Spirit of grace. Sepeka parata. Embreketeta. Receive the grace for speed. Receive the grace for speed. Supernatural accomplishment by the Spirit of the living God. Receive the grace for speed. Outside, overflows, online. The grace for speed. No more delay. No more retrogression. It will not happen at a natural frequency. I shift you by prophecy to a spiritual dimension of achievement. Bazanji Soro. Bazanji Kunyaba. you are receiving it listen let me tell you this it is only marvelous in our eyes when it is the lord's doing i'm saying it again i don't care how long you have been in that position by the spirit of grace may speed come upon you in the name of jesus for you and for your family i break the stronghold of delay i break the stronghold of retrogression by the spirit of god have that moment please. that 
black woman on black I'm seeing oil being poured on her new levels of speed in the spirit this is the house of God the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel for all of you who are in front here and for as many who are connecting grace to run I speak to you speed in your life grace to run supernatural by the Spirit of God supernatural by the Spirit of grace your life will be a wonder first to you and to everyone who cares to see I prophesy again in the name of Jesus your life will be a wonder first to you and to as many who can see listen to me please listen to me our possibilities in this kingdom are predicated upon the kind the level and the dimension of grace that is upon our lives it is true I'm not wasting your time this is by the Spirit of God because there are certain testimonies that are long overdue and in the name of Jesus I push you into them I push you by prophecy I push you into them I clear every barrier that vows that you will not move this is koinonia step into that prophecy step into that dimension step into that prophecy step into that dimension in the name of Jesus Please be seated. For every one of you who is out here, I pray for you. The evidence of this that has come upon you, may it appear unto all. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will return with strange and shocking testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ, please return back to your seat. Let me perform one more function. You don't have to come out. But the Lord is leading me. If you are here and you are walking and you are overdue for promotion, just stand up where you are. The Lord is speaking to me. Listen to me. There is a God in heaven. Oh, don't get too used to the pride of men. There is a God in heaven who regulates times and seasons. In the name of Jesus Christ, according to the word of the Lord sent to me for you, I declare by the Spirit of God from this week coming, not next week, by the spirit of grace i decree and declare step into the level that is due you through favor through grace as far as your career is concerned in the name of jesus christ it didn't take long for joseph to rise joseph said let there be searched for if you can find a man who is discreet and wise and the king said there's no man and instantly he was promoted to be a prime minister one of the things I hope we learn is the power of the supernatural the supernatural is not about falling down and rolling up and down programming spiritual possibilities by the ministry of the word the ministry of the spirit you will always not look like it, but there is a grace that keeps shifting you into it. Hallelujah. Please be seated. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Second Corinthians chapter 10, we'll read from verse 4 and 5. Second Corinthians chapter 10, we'll read from verse 4 and 5 please give it to us second corinthians chapter 10 from verse 4 and 5 the bible says for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal man-made it says but they are mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds verse 5 
he says casting down imaginations is the greek word yetzah and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of god then he says bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of christ paul whilst mentoring the church did not leave them in the dark as to how people rise and as to how people become victims of situations and circumstances for a very long time the body of christ has placed emphasis on the spirit and the spiritual growth of men and women which is very profitable but we have ignored the realm of the mind we have ignored it to our detriment and to our own peril the bible is very clear about the fact that the mind of man has a role to play in his or her actualizing their destiny their divine destiny in christ and the lord just put it strongly in my heart to share with us on the subject of strongholds and mindsets this is very powerful it's going to be a brief teaching and then we will pray strongholds and mindsets proverbs chapter 4 again and verse 23 proverbs 4 and verse 23 the bible says to keep your heart with all diligence and there is a reason for that instruction it was not a suggestion it was an instruction keep your heart the word heart um is used interchangeably in scripture with mind keep your heart with all diligence it says for out of it are the issues of life this is a very deep statement so the issues of life doesn't come into you it comes out of you it says out of it are the issues of life write this down please a stronghold may this be someone's deliverance tonight a stronghold is a sustained faulty pattern of thinking that is based on lies and is based on deception let me define what i call a lie a lie is not an incorrect statement in the kingdom a lie is anything god did not say a lie is not just an incorrect statement based on whatever reference a lie is anything god did not say no matter how true it is no matter how sociologically accepted it is if it did not come from the mouth of god in the kingdom we call it a lie is someone getting blessed so a stronghold is a sustained faulty pattern of thinking based on lies now you understand and based on deception but it doesn't stop there that faulty thinking has now been fortified by the presence of demon spirits to ensure that the victims remain at that state so when demon spirits build a fortification around a thinking this is the kind of condition that makes the word of god of non-effect please pay attention what then is a mindset let me define it very quickly mindsets refer to ideologies mindsets refer to value systems mindsets refer to perspectives so when we talk about a mindset we're talking of an ideology a value system a perspective a viewpoint a plane of perception mindsets are gates and doorways in the spirit this is a very powerful information that your mindset is literally a gate and a doorway in the realm of the spirit giving access to the ministry of the holy spirit and giving access if you allow to demon spirits you have to pay attention mindsets are gates mindsets are doorways in the spirit they permit the operation of the holy spirit or the operation of demons in the life of an individual so when mindsets are fortified by the presence of demon spirits they become strongholds 
a faulty pattern of thinking that has now been fortified by the presence of demon spirits and as a result the victim is compelled to keep thinking a certain way and the law is that the signs follow them that believe that means what is following is a report card of what you believe you do not drive them away you change what you believe are we together now what is following you is a report card is telling us the sum total of your ideologies your belief systems these signs shall follow them that believe these signs of failure shall follow them that believe in failure these signs of retrogression shall follow them that believe in retrogression these signs of limitation shall follow them that believe in limitation the signs tell us what you believe are we together I said mindsets are gates and their doorways in the spirit they permit the operation of the Holy Spirit and they permit the operation of demons now write this down please the quality of a man's life is directly tied to his mindset the quality of a man's life is directly tied to scripture tied to his mindset the quality of a man's life believe me when i tell you this that the quality of your life is not just predicated on the love of god the same lord is rich unto all are we together now yes the quality of your mindset is the quality of your life here's how the bible puts it proverbs chapter 23 please proverbs 23 and verse 7 proverbs 23 and verse 7 it says for as he thinketh in his heart interchange for mind it didn't say so he will be you already are what your mind says you are for as he thinketh in his heart so is he if your mind is defeated you are defeated if your mind is victorious you are victorious if your mind builds it then it is truly built if your mind destroys it so paul says even what we call warfare is largely in the realm of the mind the contention satan the god of this world has an assignment to blind your mind not just your eyes you do not see with your eyes you see through your eyes you see with your mind it is true define our limits and our possibilities in life mindsets define our limits they also define our possibilities in life this is true your mindset can peg you at a level regardless god's prophetic word over your life your mindset can define your limits your mindset can define your possibilities in life the third point very quickly and then i'll begin to share a few things now this one is a very serious point i want you to pay attention to hmm. a man's mindset can limit god in his life very dangerous but powerful scripture as mighty and powerful as god is a man's mindset can limit god psalm 78 please psalm 78 we we'll read from verse 41 psalm 78 and verse 41 the bible says yea they turned back and tempted god it says and limited the holy one of israel the first day i read this scripture i almost threw my bible to say who wrote this how could a man limit the god of the heavens the psalmist who said where can i hide from your presence can god be limited every time i read the scripture that said is there anything too hard the word too hard didn't look godlike why would god add too hard and i found out that the two there comes because of the difficulty in getting man to believe him and walk with him 
there was nothing too hard when man was not there check genesis 1 god said he saw he said he saw the moment he came into partnership with man the labor of the holy spirit convincing man to rise to the realm of god may make god look as though he's limited they limited the holy one a man's mindset can limit God let me tell you this just because you have dreams and visions just because you see in scripture that there are possibilities predestined for you in Christ are we together just because you even have prophetic words over your life is no guarantee that you will step into it by default every dimension of spiritual possibility is dependent on your mindset as father abraham many times god told abraham listen carefully god told abraham that my intention is to make you a father of all nations and we know that god does not lie the bible says god is not a man that he should lie he became a man but he is not a man if god is a man he must worship who created him god is not a man he only became a man so that men might become the sons of God but God is not a man that you should lie the Bible says not the son of man that you should repent are we together now yes it took Abraham a long time because you see there's something about pain and there's something about limitation when you try and try and try and it does not work chances are that you will build a justifiable theology around your plane to explain away the possibility of God triumphing over that situation and that was the case with father Abraham and God kept beckoning on him Abraham I want to lift you I want to bless you I want you to become the father of nations and then one time God invented a strategy he said Abraham come out when he came out he said look at the stars try counting them and then he would try one two three four have lost count he says so shall thy seed be and your bible says finally abraham believed god and it was counted unto him for righteousness are we blessed but very quickly how mindsets are formed now you want to pay attention please pay attention it's important that we understand and examine and probe carefully how our belief systems are formed why because we come from different cultures i come from the middle belt for instance there are many of us who come from the west the east the south some outside of this country many following around the world and historically speaking we've gone through a lot of evolution culturally speaking and so many people have imbibed all kinds of mindsets and all kinds of thinking this is the reason why the kingdom itself has its culture are we together now I did tell us, I think it was the, our first service here, that you know you are transformed when it's difficult to trace you to an earthly territory. I shouldn't look at you and just say you are a northerner. No, the, the extent of your transformation, you should be so godlike, it should be difficult to associate you with a physical territory. That is proof that you are truly transformed. So walk with me. Is God helping us? Number one. The first way mindsets are formed is culture. 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 Never downplay the effect of culture on your mind and on your thinking. Now, there are many healthy aspects of culture, many, many healthy aspects of culture. However, however, there are destructive aspects of culture many of us here i believe that we have cultural ties that if we have our way we will run away from almost every this is africa and there is almost no tribe that does not have something about their culture that is anti-christ anti-god anti-kingdom are we together now remember we're believers culture is wonderful there are healthy aspects of culture 
that inculcate morals like respect for elders etc but there are many demonic and destructive dimensions of culture and you see when you come into the faith life you have a choice either to subscribe to the ways of the kingdom or to incorporate dangerous and destructive aspects of culture that impede the operation of the Holy Ghost in our lives are you blessed culture it is amazing the variety of evil that many cultures many cultures promote all kinds of things and sincerely the promoters of these things don't have to be evil people they are people who are being faithful stewards of something that was committed to them also hallelujah number two the second way mindsets are formed past experiences good or bad your past experience can have a very negative effect on your life ask nathaniel when jesus sent for him and nathaniel heard about jesus that nazarene who was doing great things here's what nathaniel said can anything good come out of nazareth he was not speaking out of ignorance there was a track record that nazarenes did not amount to much but this one was different hallelujah just like you are different i'm walking in power walking in miracles i live a life of favor so he said can anything good come out of nazareth and then when he came and met jesus jesus surprised him he says while you were under the tree i saw you and said wow who is this he said just because i told you this you're now amazed you will see greater things than this you will see the heavens open and the angels ascending and descending upon the son of man our past can be dangerous some of us come from families where nothing was ever gotten with ease so the moment we teach that there is a possibility for ease in the kingdom that reality has not been captured in your mind you can receive every other prophetic word but that because your experience fights that prophetic word are we together africa for instance this is our beloved continent this is our beloved nation but did you know that there is a spirit in this nation and in africa that fights early achievement the moment you do anything early people say something is wrong it's true when you read about the patriarchs our fathers of faith in modern history some of them began to shake the world as teenagers Joash in the Bible was king at age eight. Josiah was king at age nine. It was as a teenager that David brought Goliath down. There is a spirit that celebrates lateness. There is a spirit that celebrates a, a snail-like advancement in our territory. And we have received it as a heritage. Jesus had turned the world upside down. Is God speaking to us now? Our past experiences. 
some of us respectfully speaking came from maybe polygamous families some of us came from backgrounds where we were not so financially advantaged some of us came from backgrounds with all sorts of variations and you will be surprised the degree to which your past has become a stronghold in your mind they came out of Egypt in one day but it took 40 years for Egypt to come out of them they kept carrying Egypt as they moved and every time God wanted to do great things Egypt was saying no go back just because you are physically out of your territory does not mean you are free are we blessed the past the past so when you hear things like favor upon your life you just laugh and say look um, I'm interested in progress not favor let it just be that I'm moving no matter how slow and God is saying no the unit of destiny is time I can do something to time to give you an advantage hallelujah number three how mindsets are formed family backgrounds I won't talk much about that don't be offended but this is true that sometimes because of the kinds of families that we came from nuclear families and, and our extended families whether it's polygamous you know traditional whatever kind of family you will be amazed for 10 years for 20 years for 30 years you've been hearing people say talk in certain ways you will be amazed at the degree to which you have been influenced and now it has become a stronghold being a pastor does not set you free automatically no being educated does not bring you that level of spiritual liberty you can be very educated you can rise to the zenith of your profession academically speaking and yet you are still in the bondage of family backgrounds there are people in church for instance who fight everybody because they came from a background where fighting and warfare was the order of the day everything is for me my seat is for me i used to have for instance maybe a stepbrother a stepsister and so we take that same mindset in the office we're suspecting everyone we're angry at everyone we're praying in tongues we're genuinely born again but we are not free are we blessed family backgrounds let me hurry up number four the fourth shaper of our mindsets are our levels of exposure this is very powerful exposure is a miracle and exposure is a blessing even though it can be destructive what is exposure the ability to expand and broaden your horizon to know the possibilities that are out there beyond your scope of reference is called exposure many times we interpret life from the lens of mediocrity the lens of our limitations listen carefully and when God wants to help you he will expose you to new dimensions there are many of us for instance who have not been exposed to certain possibilities that is in Christ for instance we have not been exposed to the reality of the healing power of Jesus the restoring power that is in Jesus the love of God like the Bible says the fellowship of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 18 don't turn here the Bible talks to us about a man called Apollos are we together the Bible says he was a great man fervent in spirit he was eloquent but he knew only the baptism of John if you read only Apollos book for the rest of your life you would never know that the Holy Spirit is a person who you can relate to you can relate with I am always I am ever conscious of the fact that there is more than I can than I'm now seeing it is it is important small businesses small ministries small families small destinies small goals I'm not talking of some carnal ambitious things that don't have a divine bearing no not at all exposure is a miracle when God wants to step you to the place of destiny he does not travel with your body he travels with your mind your body only goes where your mind has gone when your mind returns back it is your mind is the authorized usher that takes your body to the place of destiny hmm. the father saw the possibility of the whole world coming back to him again and he sent his son it was a goal that was doable 
he saw the victory that he could give to the saints not only the victory that he had as God and so he came and finished that project in three years the ability to dream with God is a miracle the ability to conquer the limitations of culture the limitations of our sociological context it takes exposure and for many of us you see how you are exposed matters because you can be exposed in a way that destroys you there are many people their doom and their unbecoming be began at the instance of a supposed exposure exposed to vices exposed to ways there are many people who were obedient and loving and sincere except that they met a group of people who wrongly exposed them and they became harsh disrespectful dishonoring aggression is not exposure it's immaturity you see but exposure is powerful moses until then had not met the god of the bible he had been in egypt he was being mentored to be the next pharaoh but now he ran away and the bible says while he was tending his father-in-law ship jethro suddenly god was ready to expose him to a new horizon he was about to meet the god of the bible and he saw a bush that was burning and yet not consumed ah moses said i didn't see this in my lecture room with all of the wizardry in egypt i didn't see it in this fashion and a voice came out of it moses take off your shoes your experience your perspective your mindset take it off for where you stand is holy ground it was on the strength of that exposure moses returned back to Ramesses, his half brother and said brother good to see you this time around i didn't come i'm not coming as the weak one who ran away i've met someone there, 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 there's an exposure i've been exposed to his glory his power and his possibilities and that one who opened my eyes instructed me to you let my people go and pharaoh said wow what an interesting lecture i see you've learned a lot janice jambers come and show this man that this is egypt and they threw their rod and moses threw his rod to cut the long story short a time came when the firstborns died and pharaoh came to a point where he realized that there was more nebuchadnezzar was one of such people he was not exposed to certain dimensions beyond his scope of reference he thought he was all and in all and god humbled him exposure is powerful exposed to the light of god exposed to the miracle working power did you know why many of the saints when you read several books like god's generals you know why it was easy for them to step into certain dimensions because they were in the atmospheres where they saw it happening why will you doubt the miracle working power of god when right in your presence you watch someone stand up a wheelchair right in your presence you watch the dead rise so what satan does to erode spiritual possibilities in a territory is to use subtlety to begin to hide these exposures so that after a long time there are hardly people who have seen those dimensions in god exposure your level of exposure financially spiritually your level of exposure it matters you must contend for a healthy level of exposure listen to me nigeria listen to me africa we have called ourselves many things that god did not call us why because of color of skin because of our sociological limitations because of our history etc but the bible says he that cometh from above is above all you must subscribe to a superior orientation that begins to culture you to believe something you were not born with that's the reason why very few people rise to a global scale because we have been indoctrinated by culture subliminally indoctrinated by respectfully speaking mass media and all kinds of experiences we've been subjugated to believe that just because you are a Nigerian just because you are an African just because you are from one area of the nation or so on and so forth it means you are limited he that cometh from above is above all above all systems above all structures he that cometh from above is above all let me give you the last key 
how mindsets are formed is God blessing you tonight the fifth way mindsets are formed is association now this is a very serious one association the Bible says God called Abraham he didn't call Lot very interesting scripture and Lot went with him God did not call Lot he called Abraham but Lot said I didn't hear God but at least I heard your obedience and I'm going to follow you and by reason of that association God began to multiply Lot when Lot forgot that it was because of association he detached from Abraham the next time we hear about Lot is in the middle of Sodom and Gomorrah about to die associations are powerful get my teaching blessed by association it's a very powerful teaching many people were visionary people on their way to do big things until they became part of groups associations clubs and all kinds of sects that derailed and faded their morals plunged them into mediocrity and laziness etc associations are powerful are we together now yes the bible says do not be deceived he said bad company can corrupt good morals it is often said that you are the average of your friends if there are six people in that group and there are five foolish people there's about to be a sixth one he that works with the wise he doesn't have to be wise just walk with the wise the bible says he that works with the wise shall also be wise but a companion of fools shall be destroyed there are people who used to have and keep loving families except that they became part of friends and associations i said you mean you don't beat your wife this is africa let me tell you what i did to my wife last week i beat the living daylight out of her and there's there's thorough compliance in that family now and then the man returns back you see notice when god came to adam in the cool of the day the bible says and they heard the voice of the lord walking in the cool of the day and he said adam where are thou and adam said i heard your voice and i hid because i was naked the next question who told you you have received an orientation that did not came from did not come from me who did you listen to adam now did not call her the wife he said the woman you gave me and he now turned and said woman what is this that you have done she said the serpent satan became the god of this world because he didn't blame anybody every time you transfer responsibility you also transfer dominion that's why when jesus was becoming seen he didn't speak he was silent all through are we blessed yes association is powerful let me tell you this love is a command association is not you must be intentional about your friends there's no such thing as we grew up together edit your relationships with intention and sustain the courage and the boldness to preserve and only keep people in your life who are consistent with your spiritual values and where god is taking you to listen to what i'm telling you this is the plague of africa the the emotional blackmail of saying we were together we grew up together we are from the same village from the same this no if they do not sustain the values that make for kingdom come the values that make for an impactful life the values that make for intimacy with the holy spirit you don't have to hate them but off you go listen listen don't just clap don't just shout listen to what i'm saying was it not because a man entered other people's boats that they began to sink jonah knew what he had done he knew what he was carrying and he quietly entered into the boat of visionary businessmen who had gone they had labored they got their goods they got everything i'm sure their wives were happy waiting for them to come and then everything began to be boisterous and he kept quiet he was sleeping 
they threw their things out he watched them through it look at the kind of retrogression his presence caused let me tell you this human beings have prophetic implications it's true Jesus fasted and prayed all night to choose 12 disciples please help them Jesus medical people tell us come doctor this is a doctor this is a medical doctor medical people tell us that there are certain diseases that are communicable this is medicine is that true I may not love him, I may not believe in him, but just, and it can come on you, theater. That a flu what I breathe. Sample. Jonah want to lose everything. John, the upon your courage to edit your association. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. There are people who love the house of God and love the things of God. But many times you will find out that they become part of some sort of group, maybe for from financial benefits, political benefit, etc. And they come and lie to you that it's a nuisance to love God. It's a nuisance to be passionate about the things of God. That's not how politicians rise, they say. That's not how business people rise, they say. If it's not in your presence If it's not by your hand If it's not by your spirit Don't let me out For everything I need is association can affect your mindset when you are in the midst of people who pray I assure you it won't be long before you take God seriously in fact let me tell you this a community life is the key to sustaining kingdom values you will never be able to grow consistently in isolation you will need to connect to a body of believers of like-minded passion so when you are praying in the spirit someone does not look at you and laugh and make you feel stupid for praying in tongues then you quickly off your ringtone your ringtone is prophesying to you and you off it quickly because you are in an environment where there are unwritten rules that it is you are too civilized and too dignified association I learned this early in life and for many of us this may be a message already for you there's such a psychological pressure to belong yes I know that psychologically speaking one of the needs of men is to be accepted and to be loved this is why the Bible says behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God he said I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness he is that friend that can stick closer than a brother you must trust God for grace listen to me carefully there are many of you you would have been champions now by the standard of God but you surrounded yourself with all kinds of mediocres comparing themselves with themselves and not doing anything global small minds doing small things whereas your contemporaries are changing nations we must trust god for grace edit your association edit your association hallelujah i will, i heard of a story of a man who was deaf and it was not known that he was deaf and so while he was trying to climb i think he was climbing a very high altitude or a tree or something while he was climbing those under kept beckoning on him 
listen please please come down you will die and he thought they were cheering him and he was smiling at them and kept moving up and they were saying come down somewhere even crying because they didn't know he was deaf so he thought that they were cheering him and when he climbed and arrived there that was when they discovered that the man was deaf because he could not hear them he had to make do with his interpretation of what they were doing so he called what their their mockery he called it commendation and it sponsored him until he finished strong the lord is calling me to ministry from where which village have you had did you see what your father become and you shrink back in mediocrity oh from this little hamlet the lord will take you and the sounds of worship from you will get to the ends of the earth and here they come on accredited counselors they come with all kinds of counsels of ahitophel you must trust god for grace to connect yourself with the right people it has to be intentional please listen to me some of you are in politics some of you are in government some of you are in business and i tell you this you are the average both in thought and in results of the people you surround yourself with are we blessed quickly let me touch on the last area and then we pray when the lord showed me the work that he's now doing when the lord showed me the possibilities that would be working in as a ministry it was it was something that was big based on my background that would take the truth of god's power and grace literally across the nations of the earth i studied my bible and i looked through history and i saw great men and women and right from that small room i said lord i believe you let's go now let me tell you it's, it's, it's not unusual for people to not believe you so don't don't think it's new of course they would not believe you until they see the workings of the grace of god on your life i don't know why i'm saying this but i'm saying this to someone right now because you are still evolving it does not yet appear you told people that you're going to fund the gospel you will fund the gospel like a government but now people are laughing at you because you're in one room find courage history always repeats itself that god can lift you as a trophy mary said be it unto me according to your word be it unto me how do we pull down strongholds listen very carefully number one the first key to deconstructing and dismantling wrong inferior beliefs that keep us in poverty that keep us in failure that keep us in mediocrity the first key write this down please is to recognize and to admit the need for renewal you must recognize and you must admit listen to me knowing that you need help is almost half the problem solved the fact that you are aware the prodigal son came to himself the bible says and here's what he said how many hired servants does my father have and i'm here feeding with the swine he came to himself he was not advised the Bible says he said to himself I will arise and I will go to my father and I'll say father I have sinned against you and against heaven and I am not worthy to be taken as your son but take me as one of your servants and while he was coming afar off the father saw him and came and embraced him the responsibility of recognition that I recognize and I realize that I may not have any advantage from a territorial standpoint. I recognize and I realize that I may be coming from a background that is largely anti-Christ, anti-kingdom, for instance. That recognition, that brokenness, that contriteness of heart will always attract the spirit of grace and wisdom to you. 
Are we together? It's true. You need to admit that you need renewal. That's why the Bible says that we should receive with meekness the engrafted word. Can I tell you this? I submit to you people of God. There is a lot of pride and a lot of arrogance in the body of Christ and across our sociological sphere. It's the reason why very few people rise. Pride over mediocrity. Pride over nothing. I'm not being, I'm not being sarcastic. I apologize if it sounds so. But I need to charge you and shake you up. Listen, do not be ashamed and embarrassed when you discover that there is need for a higher dimension. That meekness and humility is very powerful. There were two thieves with Jesus. Are we together now? And one of them kept ranting and talking nonsense, even though he was about to die. You see those kinds of people. At the point of death, he was a thief. He was aware that he was a thief. He was aware of what he stole and he didn't sound contrite at all. Mocking Jesus and the other one said, Mr. Man, shut up. We stole. We are aware of what we did. This man is innocent. And Jesus heard him. There is, there is something about the voice of brokenness. There is something about the voice of genuine meekness. No matter how wrong you are, no matter how confused you are, the moment you are broken and you are contrite, you are attracting the attention of His Majesty. He said, this day you will be with me in paradise. You need to admit the need. I had a conversation not too long ago with one of our fathers in this nation and um, when we spoke we spoke for a few hours and when he began to open me up to dimensions in ministry saying so many things sharing from years of experience i sat there feeling like a toddler i sat there feeling like someone who was just getting out of kindergarten and i said bless god for this encounter this is the kind of exposure that i need be careful be sure that you are not your best reference it is dangerous you must find a way of finding yourself in an atmosphere that stretches you pats your back very briefly and yet tells you that there are higher heights though we are few we're surrounded by men who have crossed that river before and this is the song we'll be singing forever listen this is very powerful stretch yourself You've done so much, wonderful. But then God immerses you in an environment that stretches you. I remember the first day I watched Benny Hinn, I said, my God, what is this? I remember when I watched some of the generals, even though God was already doing great things in and through my life, I said, what is this? I had the opportunity to meet a few of them before they went to be with the Lord. Some of the, you know, those who met them, not God's generals now. But it was, it was amazing what they did to my spirit. I continue to press this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind. They don't have to be wrong things. Beware of excessively patting yourself at the back. Do so and then quickly. Champions are always forward thinking. Nobody claps for you for the same thing twice. When they clap for you once, that's it. If you have nothing new, there will be no applause again. Are we blessed? So you must recognize and admit the need for renewal. Number two. There are times that you may need to cast the demons and the spirits that keep the faulty mindset. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. You must cast, there are real spirits 
that can build the bible says in whom the god of this world please look up has blinded their minds it was not a philosophy that blinded their minds there is a real spirit that blinds the minds of people let me tell you this did you know that just because you are looking it doesn't mean you are seeing yeah the bible says that when those men who wanted to sodomize um lot remember now lord gave his daughters and they said no 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 we want lot the bible says that the angels caused blindness to come on them and they wearied themselves in front of the door they were right in front of the door but they could not see the miracle of open eyes the bible says the god of this world you can pass opportunities you can pass relationships but because there are spirits that blind the eyes of people they will make you call good evil you will call evil good they will make you destroy the helpers of your destiny because you cannot see he said open down my eyes that i may behold there are times you need to take authority in the name of jesus and cast those spirit influences every good thing that comes into your life something happens and until you fight it you are not at rest so your life is surrounded by the memory of good things and good people who keep passing through your life like ushers you must sustain the grace to take authority over the spirits that cause these things Bazanji Kunya Number three, how do you pull down these strongholds? The renewal of the mind. What does that mean? Passionately pursuing to know God's perspective about life. Listen to me. There is an intention to renewal and transformation. You must passionately pursue God's perspective. We study the Bible because it contains the wisest perspective about life, about everything. You have to know God's perspective about life, about finances, about everything in life. It's called the renewal of the mind. Romans chapter 12 from verse 1 and 2. It says, do not be conformed. He says, I beseech thee, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you offer your bodies a living sacrifice. He says, holy and acceptable unto God. He calls it your reasonable act of service or worship. Verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world. Is the word aeon, the thinking pattern that comes with the system. He says, but be ye transformed evolve into superior dimensions of yourself by the renewing of your mind you must trust god and refuse your current level lord i am tired of this level i'm tired of the limitations the mediocrity that the mediocrity that comes with this level the problem was never the oil it was the space that the vessels gave the oil the prophet diagnosed it accurately he said you call the oil small because it was a small vessel carrying the oil the oil was hearing the conversation he says go and borrow vessel you don't borrow oil but you can borrow vessel buy the truth sell it not he says go and borrow borrow not a few when he began to pour the oil to the vessels the oil kept increasing he said go and sell it pay your debt and leave off the rest are we together now when you read job chapter 29 job was giving us the secret of his outstanding life and he began to give us a a, a breakdown of the many things that happened to him the first light that came upon job was on his mind not on his path there are two dimensions of light there is the one that shines upon your head there is the one that shines on your path the one that shines upon your head recalibrates reconstructs your understanding is called the mind of christ philippians chapter 2 and verse 10 it says permit this mind to be in you which was also in christ jesus there was a belief system that the son of the living god had 
that made the Holy Spirit comfortable living with him from age 12 while his contemporaries were running around he was with the scribes and the Pharisees learning learning it was on the strength of his spiritual investment that he could withstand Satan at the wilderness because he came to him it is written he came to him it is written he came to him it is written you must be full not just of scripture from a religious standpoint but it is important to know God's perspective please look up the kingdom has God's idea on everything God has his idea on kingdom wealth and prosperity the world also has his idea the world's ways that you can cheat you can kill if need be you can tell lies you can be greedy you can be involved in anything provided money comes but the kingdom has its way you must learn the ways of God there is Jesus the way the methodology of the kingdom the authorized channel he said I am the door a door means an authorized access point please listen carefully and so hitherto when you were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel you were not saved you were not born again you could do anything anyhow but now you are in the kingdom and you begin to study the ways of God then you learn that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth the ways of God there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty you learn that God can load men with daily benefits not just monthly benefits are we together now yes you learn that the proof of his fatherhood is his benevolence that if you being evil know how to give good gifts so the the awareness of the fatherhood of God gives you the confidence to approach him you must learn the ways of God in the kingdom there is how God restores in the world there's no restoration if it's gone it's gone ah but hallelujah in the kingdom there is a way and I will restore even time the years God doesn't just restore things God restores time so when Jesus died while they were talking about the dead Jesus within 72 hours he was back to life This is a blessed hope for us that means that all of the things you would have achieved that your knowledge or your insufficient knowledge did not allow you to achieve that the hand of God is able to go back into your yesterday and take everything there and bring it forward to your tomorrow this is scripture but you must learn the ways of God your confidence in this kingdom is when you sustain a superior belief that is culture not just based on Scientology or the philosophies of men you are transformed to the degree that you have the mind of Christ in experience hmm. are we together it is true that we live in a dark world that is full of evil it is true that there are arrows that fly by day but then you are convinced you are convinced that the jealousy of God has such his investment upon you the Bible says where your treasure is that is where your heart will be and if you are truly his treasure that means his heart and his jealousy has been invested towards you this gives you confidence Hmm. that when men say there is a casting down for me I can say there is a lifting up it's not just some Christian jargon this is truth based on the mind of God ah, that the wisdom of God is at work in me it is true this is the mind of Christ you have to believe it do not think this is childish you ignore this it will be to your peril Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 the mindset of the kingdom and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day he says the Lord will set you on high this is my destiny in Christ I sustain that mindset from whatever background and regardless any situation that he will set me on high above nations not above contemporaries above nations verse 2 
it says and all these blessings shall come upon me and even overtake me this I believe this I believe ah. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 I'm showing you pieces of scripture that reflects the mind of Christ and I will give Joshua Selman favor in the sight of anybody including enemies of Egyptians and the proof is that when you go you will not go empty I believe it the Bible says strangers shall feed your flock this is God's mindset listen you have to choose what to believe this is not just some Pentecostal thing no believe me this is how the kingdom was framed it says through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of god many people keep arguing this and they are failing they are broke they are mediocre they are going down they are sick nothing is happening in their lives superior belief systems cultured by the word of god when I get up in the morning, I say, this is the day the Lord has made. My emphasis is the Lord has made. Who made the day matters to me. Because I need to know if my interest was represented in that day. And if it is the Lord that made that day, I am secured. Because I know what the Lord can make. He is the maker of the heavens and the earth. So if he made a day, a thousand shall fall by my right, he said. 10,000 by my right side but he says I need not fear why I will only stand and watch and see the reward of the wicked my Bible tells me that the fullness of my days I will fulfill this is what I believe you can't imagine I was saying it humorously somewhere you can't imagine the number of text messages I get quite honestly Apostle be careful I just had a vision and I saw your name in a shrine and I know they are not lying it will be foolish to think at this level the devil will be clapping to no but did the bible not say behold i give you authority over snakes and scorpions he said and over all the powers of the enemy and then he said nothing here's the keyword shall by any means there are many means many means but he says shall by any means your realities are framed by what you choose to believe are we together now yes sir so you must make up your mind it is not about i am a yoruba person it is not about i am an Igbo person it's not about i am a hausa person i'm a northern man. i'm an american a european asian no no the bible says we have been called out of every tribe every tongue every kindred immersed in the kingdom baptized into Christ through his spirit and you must sustain that superior belief system listen to me there are many of you respectfully speaking and please don't feel insulted you have been in this city for many years and the city does not know you why because if there is a belief system that makes dominion work you have to know what you believe you have to choose what you believe i made a covenant with god and this i believe i found out from scripture that jesus never met anyone twice for the person to be blessed and i made a covenant with god i said lord you are sending me to minister to people may i never have to meet someone twice for his life to change yes sir because you will meet people who are at a point of life and death there's no time for playing games and dilly dally the messianic prophecy isaiah 61 the bible says the spirit of the lord is upon me upon me upon me upon me is a revelation the spirit of the lord is upon me it's not trouble that is upon me god told me what is upon me whatever he did not say there are yokes that can come on people but he told me what is that if i ever feel heavy what is upon me is the spirit of the lord this is my thinking so there's no room for depression to say this is a, uh, 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 uh. the bible tells me if you ever feel anything upon you it is the spirit of the lord and then he says 
help them please it says he has anointed me i truly believe i am anointed find a way of believing this this is not a pastor's thing this is not a minister's thing let me tell you what it means to be anointed it comes from the word to be smeared with oil but that simply means authorized anointing is a system of authorization it legitimizes your operation so that you can minister the power of god these are ordinary hands yes my family members are here my sisters are here biological people but when i met him something happened to me and i believe it i believe that i'm not ordinary look i'm not bragging forgive me i am i'm revealing something to you when you hold that file it's not five fingers that is holding that file uh -uh. please find a way of believing what i'm telling you help them please for as long as you are the only one holding that file a door will never open for as long as you are the only one preaching your your words cannot carry that power the ability of the spirit your words become like arrows sent into destinies dissecting impossible situations why because you are aware i read in my bible jesus said it and i believe and the lord walking with them confirming the word with signs so i expect it that whilst i am teaching whilst the word of god is coming there is an unction kalis kebarata an unction healing an unction delivering an unction opening doors this i believe this is the supernatural power of a transformed mind your mind can give the holy ghost space when the man of God was leading us in worship here, one of the things I was praying for is, Lord, help your people understand what you have done to us. Help us understand that we are not ordinary. This is not a Pentecostal thing. These hands are not ordinary hands. Hear me, doctors. Hear me, medical people. That is not only an injection. An injection should not have more power than your hand. Believe me when I tell you this. exalted reigning and ruling with him in power we have been commanded to bless and i believe you hear people come and testify here let me tell you this i've told you that prophecy does not only reveal it's not only when i call names of people and numbers no that if it is true you are anointed then the opening of your mouth is like the opening of the gate of men's destiny because you will release something from the throne through your mouth to the destinies of men and let me use the opportunity and declare over someone in the name of jesus the son of the living god i speak over your life and all that concerns you step into new dimensions of the spirit new wine upon your destiny new dimensions of spiritual illumination in the name of jesus christ hear me let me speak over your life that any man who fights you goes down instantly please sit down we're about to pray shortly Enter the new, says the Spirit of God. Enter the new. I'm bringing you into the new. Shalindes teneka paharande shadia. Pragades kili manakatosia. Enter the new. Mantedes kebarita. Pegadebele ketebarakatosia ta. Enter the new. Stay at the spirit of the Lord. Listen to me. 
please hear me if you are in ministry here in the name of jesus from tonight step into a supernatural dimension of ministry no more preaching and sharing the grace with people sleeping as though you is not god that is talking to you what kind of a ministry is that the next time you go to lead that prayer the next time you go to lead that fellowship i'm speaking by the spirit The next time you go to your prayer group, the next time you lead the, the, the fellowship at your workplace, I release an unction upon you. I release an anointing upon you. You will speak with fire. You will see signs following. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God. The anointing of the Holy Spirit. Hear me, business people. Listen to me. It takes more than buying and selling to prosper. There is truly a grace that can help men. There is a grace that can give men visibility in this kingdom. It's called the hear ye him anointing. The anointing that compels systems and structures to acknowledge the workings of the spirit on your life.
I don't care how limited your business has been in the name of Jesus from tomorrow I stand by the grace of God I place an unction upon what you do and in the name of Jesus let it prosper by the Spirit of the Living God defying the laws of failure I release you to prosper hallelujah listen we're talking about mindsets and strongholds please listen to me it's not enough to just receive Jesus into your heart you have to journey with the Holy Ghost and through scripture to begin the work of transformation It's one of the hardest if I would use that expression assignment of the Holy Ghost in the life of a believer because most believers are not malleable enough every time i'm before him i tell him lord I'm, I'm before you i'm aware of my limitations i'm aware of my limitations i ask that there be an exchange a supply of strength and power there are so many sick people depending on my life there are so many confused people grant grace from heaven Solomon Lange called him my helper. Listen to what you are saying. Bazanji Konya Ba Listen to me For some of you You may not know what has come upon your life It's until you step out of this place tonight All of a sudden you will watch doors open Supernatural doors open You will open your Bible and a strange dimension of illumination revelation knowledge coming upon you hear me everything he said here is true you can believe it verily verily i say unto you the works that i do you shall also do he says greater works i believe him I sincerely believe I sincerely believe that I can never be disadvantaged honestly honestly I believe it when the Lord sent me to this city the Holy Spirit instructed me to get the map of Abuja and when I dropped the map on my table I said this city is so small it's not pride all of a sudden I saw just six local governments we are well able Joshua and Caleb the remaining came back with all kinds of reports the Bible calls it evil reports you have said many things about yourself God did not tell you you have received many things that were not given by God it's time to change it tonight it's time to refuse it's time even if you are the first person who does it from your family there is grace for you is someone ready to pray tonight lift your voice and begin to pray all across this building pray in the spirit for one minute go ahead and pray koinonia pray all the overflows pray outside pray Someone pray over your life. Ah! 
casting down every imagination casting down every imagination go ahead and pray i tear down wrong mindsets that came from culture i tear down wrong mindsets in the name of jesus i tear down wrong mindsets that came from my past i tear down wrong mindsets in the name of jesus i adopt the mind of christ the winner's mind the victor's mind the winner's mind the victor's mind the winner's mind the victor's mind i tear the wrong mindset the mindset that tells you you cannot rise in politics the mindset that tells you you cannot rise in business the mindset that tells you you cannot rise in ministry tear that mindset down in the name of jesus hallelujah listen to me listen to me the next prayer point you are going to confront head on every challenge that has stood before you and mocked the god of the bible i release my faith with you in this corporate atmosphere call it by name and command it by the spirit get out of the way it's time to advance it's time to make progress someone pray someone pray financial mountains someone pray mountains of spiritual laxity mountains of prayerlessness mountains of wordlessness to make very powerful declarations don't be afraid the bible says let the redeemed of the lord say so let the healed of the lord say so let the lifted of the lord say so let the anointed of the lord say so and whatsoever adam called it that was the name thereof are you ready to speak over your destiny and over your family lift your voice and begin to speak i prophesied as i was commanded i decree and declare the lord is my light and salvation are you declaring by the spirit of god my path is as a shining light shining ever brighter please don't be quiet don't be silent i decree and declare by the spirit of god prophesy your global disability prophesy your increase Prophesy your prosperity, declare by the spirit of grace. I rise by the spirit of God. Greater levels of prayer, greater levels of passion, greater levels of fire, greater levels of love, appetite for spiritual things. In the name of Jesus, going from glory to glory. Praise to praise, praise multiply, wisdom multiply, power multiply.
Alleluia. 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 Two more prayer points that we are done. Let me tell you this. We are about to pray. You are going to call back everything that left you and yet is not in God's divine purpose to leave you. The Bible says, where fell it? Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And he threw a stick and the axe head came back. Help them, please. Listen to me. The Holy Spirit is ministering to me. You have to sustain a superior mindset that everything that leaves your life is still in the earth. And there is a technology to call it back to your life. Relationships, opportunities. Are you ready to pray? Lift your voice in the name of Jesus. Help them please. Help them please. And I will restore to you the years that the canker walk, the palmer walk has eaten. Command restoration over your destiny. Command restoration over your life. Command restoration over your prayer life. A greater dimension of prayer fire. A greater dimension of God's fire. A greater dimension of spiritual diligence. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. I have a covenant of peace. All is called by faith. You are not wasting your time. All is called by faith. All is called by faith. All is called by faith. I call back my honor by faith. I call back my lifting by faith. I call back the fire of my destiny by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen to me. We're about to round up. Listen to me. I'm a student in the school of the spirit and I have learned and I have come to respect the power of the anointing. It is truly what is on you that controls what is around you. It is true. And for every time you come to this ground, there has to be something that will rest upon your life. It says, my horn has thou exalted like the horn of a unicorn and I am anointed. I am anointed. I am anointed. I am authorized. Authorized to do business. Authorized to do ministry. Authorized to advance. The power of the Holy Ghost is a reality that we must embrace it says for with God now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly far above all that we ask or think according to the power is the word energies that works in us there is an energizing of the spirit hallelujah listen I'm about to speak over your life 
there are words that are empty there are words that are informative but there are words that are traced they carry deep mysteries on them hallelujah madam what is your name this woman on black huh what's your name come who is Choma? what's your what's her name huh who is Choma? your Choma, madam please just give me five minutes look at me where are you coming from you're here in abuja i want to pray for you your life is truly about to change you believe in jesus did you come alone i came with my sister where is she because it's two of you god is visiting the entire family where is the person lord you took my pain away then you gave me joy you're my peace my melody in the center of the storm you gave me a brand new song to sing to you hallelujah each your ma this is what i'm hearing who is that each your ma what's your name what's your name each your ma Taking the pain and the sorrows away, you've given me peace on the night. Don't need to cry, cause you always me. There is a grace for favor, madam, that is coming on you. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus, may that grace take you to realms, superior realms in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, hold your hands together. Truly speaking, let me tell you, I give you now and the next one month, the way God is going to shift all of you. I stretch my hands, take that grace. Right now, in the name of Jesus, you step into superior dimensions of favor. This is by the power of the Holy Ghost. The power of God is going to come on one of you. This four ladies looking at me. I'm seeing oil being poured upon you. New dimensions in the spirit. This is what the Holy Ghost is telling me. In the name of Jesus, I bless every one of you and I pray for you. Even by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will never return the same. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will never return the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me talk to one more person. James. Who is James? I'm hearing the word James. Who is James? You are wearing like a green nose mask or something like that. James. Who is that? What's your name? What's your name? What do you do, sir? I'm a pastor. You're a pastor? Yes. Where? In Kubo, in Abuja, here, yes. your own ministry. Yes. Can I pray for you? Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God, I stretch my hands. There is there, there is still a need for many, many, many servants of God doing great things. And I tell you, the days of superstar christianity in terms of exclusivity and fighting other people those days are over we are united first in the name of jesus regardless our differences doctrinally etc we are one big army advancing the kingdom can i have a believing amen i pray for you sir may the lord empower you you return back to your assembly a sign and a wonder in the name of jesus the christ amen. of god I decree and declare fresh grace, Amen. fresh power upon you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. My brother, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you. In Jesus' name. That which has never been done, even in your family, may my God use you to do. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sir. Now, I don't... I don't do politics in church i don't i try as much as possible to not do i love lands in a lot of trouble but sir i will talk to you 
but I'm seeing you climb a ladder in politics. There is a strange, the, this is this is even just the beginning. This is what God is doing. That that's something we'll discuss in a personal basis. But I'm telling you that do not plateau. You are just about to rise. There is a great destiny for you, even politically. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please bring me someone who shouts now loud under the anointing. The hearing of everyone. Let me just talk to that person and we're done. So here, you are from Christ Embassy. Who is that? I want to pray for you. I'm seeing that you're a pastor. You're from Christ Embassy. Sir, look at me. I want to pray for you. In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God? What do you do, sir? I'm a lawyer and also a pastor. You're a lawyer and a pastor? Yes, sir. Don't feel bad. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a man on chains from head to toe. This is what I'm seeing. A lawyer and a pastor. But in the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God, I declare, I stretch my hands. Let it come to an end now. Everything that represents captivity, I release grace upon you, sir. Amen. You will go back and you will do exploits in career and in ministry. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. If, is, there, is there a pastor like that? Is there someone like that? You're a pastor? I'm not seeing a pastor, but I'll pray for you anyway. But you're, you're a pastor? Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will carry superior dimensions of the giftings and the grace of God. Where is that pastor? You are, you are a worker here. pastor in Christ's embassy or I don't know if you were or was or something oh it's you where is your you, you are here alone where is your wife wife come quickly please there is an oil there is a grace that is coming upon you God is not done with you both of you I stretch my hands by the Spirit of God and I pray for you both this is what the Lord is revealing to me there is a dimension of the healing ministry that God wants to bring you into. Receive that grace. Take that anointing. Both of you will walk in superior dimensions of the healing grace. I release that anointing from today. Step into it. It's an impartation by the spirit of grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Experience the hand of God in the name of jesus every other person who is in ministry here step into supernatural dimensions of results in the name of jesus Christ.